When that beat drops, it's just hot up in here. It is not hot outside, though. It is cold. What is up, Los Angeles Taco? Laura Tejeda here, your host of LA Taco Live with Laura. You're joining us for a very exciting episode today. If you're not new to us, you know that we've been doing this weekly on Thursday evenings, and we're bringing you straight fire. Today on the show's agenda, we have, we have Chef Walter Adriansen uh, throwing down with us with some ceviche in the kitchen. And we also have DJ Sis up in the house so we're about to have a good ass time for today's episode for folks that are new we welcome you to the motherfucking party we are here we are made this show is made possible by all of the members of LA Taco if you don't know what LA Taco is we are an online publication that provides and publishes news stories regarding politics lifestyle culture news and of course tacos and amazing grub in Los Angeles so make sure that you check us out at latacocom if you're not a member become one buy some merch get it together and join the party because we're having a good ass time and you don't want to be late so what am I mad at today this show always happens around dinner time. And who doesn't love dinner? Some people might not, and y'all are whack. But I want to talk about something happening in with a local a fast food joint, in and out in and out That's what a hamburger is all about. One thing they aren't about, though, is checking proof of vaccinations for their indoor dining areas, y'all. CBS reported that one of their reporters is visiting in and outs around Los Angeles and California and noticing that in and out is defying the rule to check proof of vaccination before folks enjoy their double doubles. Now, don't get me wrong. A bitch loves a double double, but a bitch also likes to be safe. A bitch is me. That is me, <laughs> unless y'all bitches out there like it too. <laughs> but we just want to let folks know that this is happening, and it's very interesting to see that they're taking the stance. They want to make sure that they're welcoming every single person that comes into their place to enjoy a hamburger, regardless of vaccination status or not. Now, we know from past episodes and just from local news that these folks that are not checking proof of vaccination are being fined. It doesn't seem like in and out gives one fuck. They're just out here serving burgers to anybody and everybody. Um, and I really don't know how I feel about it, to be honest, because I do love me a burger. Um, but I will point you to LATaco.com to check out my hood burger story, where I broke down some of the best burger places you can visit in Los Angeles. If you are anti in and out for a lot of different reasons, because we know that they also have problematic political stances sometimes. Um, and they're closed on Easter. What's up? Not everybody celebrates Easter, y'all. We want double doubles, too. Um, shout out to the resurrection of Jesus, though. <laughs> Abuelita, te quiero. Uh, but we really uh, want to support local. If you're like, you know what? No, nah, I'm not down with that. In and out until you start checking proof of vaccination, then we want you, we want to support other places. We got amazing places in East Los. You know that I run the page Hungry in East Los on Instagram. And one of my personal favorites that I actually discovered when writing the piece, I had tried it when I was a kid, but rediscovered it as an adult, is Cronus. Now, we call it Cronies in the hood, obviously, because we say I say everything in Spanish. I'm over here generalizing. I was like, yo, let's go to Cronies. Cronies has the best chili dog, chili burger made by generations and generations of Greek folks who put their love, hearts, souls, and fucking breasts into this chili. I don't know why I said breasts. I felt like that gave volume and oomph. But they really put some love into it. There's Cronies. There's First Street Burgers. Shout out to you all. There's George's Burgers in Boyle Heights. So... If you're not interested in supporting in and out because of their stance and not checking proof of vaccination, make sure to go to LATaco.com. Go to my author page, Laura Tejeda. Check out the Hood Burger story. Um, I might miss a double-double because, or I might just go through the drive-thru. Who knows? We'll see how I feel maybe next time. But right now, I'm mad about it. in and out do better. Okay? Just make sure people are safe. Omarion is here. We heard that last week. So that headline really shook me. But I am joined here with my girl, Sam Samantha Nunez, our fact checker, our dope LA Taco team member. Sam, tell us who you are. What do you do at LA Taco? And let's get into some headlines, girl. Yes. So I am our director of marketing and social media. And yes, queen. Um, so today we're going to go through the news and we're going to start off with La Tia, the one who's coming up 
with these back alley butt lifts. Back alley butt lifts? What the am I? <laughs> what is not, going on? Definitely not your tia. Definitely not my tia either. Um, so Alicia Galas and Libby Adam, who's la tia, have been conducting um, illegal medical procedures with no medical license. So they're marketing out on social media and targeting people who are looking for plastic surgery and for those butt lifts. Um, that they can do it at a much cheaper rate. Uh, in sources say that people paid three thousand dollars for, you know, the a little disrespect. Butt lift. Not the same amount we pay for braces for right. an ass. You're paying three thousand for a fake ass, but it's like you know what you do you. But the issue with this is that um, a lot of women don't know that they're conducting this with no medical license and with no like medical experience. Um, and it resulted in the death of a 26 year old woman named Carissa Raj Paul in 2019. Uh. Uh, and since then a hundred women have come up actually saying that they are victims of this pair, this woman, this mother daughter duo. Wow. Um, and saying that, you know, they had botched surgeries and the death of this woman was caused from a poisonous silicone mixture. So it's, it's terrifying to see that this is happening. You know, people, there's this whole craze on social media that you need this perfect body and you need the hourglass shape. Um, but going to like some someone who's just the back on social alley, media, baby. So, the can back you imagine? Alley. We go to the alleys for fake Gucci, not for fake asses. For fake okay, ass. let's be safe, right? So, in the report, it also said that women were going; they were being called to the, get these services done in hotel rooms, in random like airbnb and doing home visits too right home visits exactly Yo, home visits. these people are taking botox party to a whole new level not only right. are they injecting with botox but they are putting some dangerous ass solutions <laughs> into your rear yeah. end and that's scary death okay there's one thing to be botched and to right. you know pitch your show or your situation to the e-news channel right but right. to die for an ass i could never but rest in peace yo because that's really fucked up like yeah. the fact that they're out here doing that and probably selling women a fake dream right right exactly the the most concerning part is that they're preying on women who are on social media and they're using these hashtags and the woman who passed away um she was posting on her social media like you guys need to come to la tia like oh, she'll no. get you right and the only thing I want to go to my tia for is a bomb ass dish of food, <laughs> not for an ass. Maybe yeah. it'll make my ass grow a little bit, but for different reasons. You feel yeah. Me? So Damn. these women are on a one million dollar bail. They had a court yesterday, but there is no current update. So for anyone who may have seen this, who may have gotten these surgeries or these procedures, uh, law enforcement's asking people to come forward. Like it is an embarrassing thing. Like you know, you got a botch surgery, but it, it will help. And stopping people from doing this kind of like, you know, dangerous game. procedure. Yeah. Dangerous yeah. Procedure. Thanks for breaking it down too. And of you mentioned course. that it cost about three thousand, four thousand for Latina yes. to do it. They were cashing in if there were a hundred women, right? That exactly. Came forward. And I, after doing some re research myself as well, I know that this usually costs within within between ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Right. So they're giving you a discount, but then there's death. So let's be careful. That's terrifying. <laughs> and I know they're in custody, but I don't know if Latia is the only one, if I'm being honest. The internet did not want us to be great, y'all. We were talking about butt lifts, and we were about to start talking about LAPD and Facebook. And coincidentally, we shut down. We see y'all. We know what the fuck you're doing. Just kidding. <laughs> Sam, wrap up the LAPD story real quick, and LA then we'll get into our third headline. Yes, LAPD. So Facebook wrote LAPD saying, hey, you can't create fake profiles, fake identities, or use our platforms for surveillance. And LAPD said, um, it's okay. Like, we're using, like, a surveillance. We're catching crime. It's, we're doing, right we're, we're doing our work. But what's even more interesting is that Facebook's been slow to react to, like, M misinformation about covid political like false political ads so it's interesting to see how this plays out in the long run and if facebook's able to police or get their policies like enforce their policies even though they've been pretty lenient with other causes they're trying to police the police but where you at when childhood traffic happening ha childhood trafficking happens on facebook facebook right so a lot of people have critiques so let's move on to the third headline our third headline lalo's mexican food in moore park so there was a thanksgiving tragedy that happened when uh 
Orlando Orozco was stripping the floors and a fire suddenly broke out. So it led to him getting 60% burns all oh. over his body. And he will be having surgeries three every three to five days over the next couple months. To make um, sure that he survives and like makes a full yes. recuperation. Wow. And he is a father of four. The fourth one is on its way. Will be born in May. And what's amazing about this story is that the community is rallying behind him. Um, you know, he was one of the first people to help feed the community during COVID, and now the community is coming back and helping him. Uh, they created a GoFundMe for $125,000, and they are now at 84000 So, happy story to end on. That is a happy story. And shout out to Lalo's in Moore Park, and shout out to c the community that's getting together together to help them out, yo. That's what's beautiful. The holidays are coming up, and it happened right before one of the big holidays. So, uh, shout out to y'all. And thanks, Sam, for breaking all the beautiful headlines down with us. Y'all, we're going to go to a commercial break, but we'll be right back with the rest of the show. <laughs> Y'all know me. Y'all know I fuck with a taco de barbacoa. Let's check it out. the Bell Gardens, I am here at Tamales Elena y Antojitos, and we're gonna get to know the folks, the magical hands, the Reinas Costeñas Afro-Mexicanas behind Tamales Elena y Antojitos. Episode five of Hanging with Taqueros. Y'all ain't ready, sponsored by White Claw. Please tell me your name and a little bit about the space. Hi, so my name is Jurep. Maria. Maria. <laughs> Who is Elena? El it's my mom. Uh, so tell me a little bit about la comida que hacen. Que cocinan? Que es lo más rico? Uh, lo más rico? Bueno, lo más, mi favorito son los pozoles. You know, they're very traditional from where we're from, la, from la costa de Guerrero. You can never go wrong, porque tenemos tres opciones. Es el tradicional, que es el blanco, el rojo y el verde. My personal favorite would be the green one. We, every day. <laughs> Every day is Jueves de Pozole, okay? So we can get a little pozolito right now. Because you know, if you're a real one, you like pozole during the heat. Talk to me about the pescadilla. I was learning about this earlier. Yeah, our pescadillas, they're uh, very traditional in Guerrero. Over there, you find them everywhere. There's ladies selling in a, uh, you know, you're taking sun in a beach, they ladies selling this out of the basket. It's stewed fish inside a tortilla, and then we fry the whole taco. And it's so delicious. Is your mouth watering? Because mine is. La reina de tamales Elena y antojitos is not here with us, Elena herself. But who would you say is her favorite? Her Neither baby boy. Of us. <laughs> not, none of us. It's her baby boy over there. You got baby boy in the house. Yeah. Baby boy, you want to come out? Baby, baby Juan baby is Elena's favorite. What's your name? My name is Juan Ulises. She comes in on Mondays, check all the food, and ask if Juan has eaten. Have you fit my baby yet? Juan better be fed out here, okay? Elena takes care of Juan. Juan, what is your favorite grub? Los tacos de barbacoa are pretty, pretty fire. Those those changed my life. Uh, uh! Be real with me. Who is the who's the best cook? Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We about to fight. Just kidding. I'm the head of the tamale prepping and tamale making. Okay. Yes. If you want things done with the tamales, I'm the one. We got a princesa de los tamales, y'all. All right, Jurep, I know you throw down. I know you throw down. What do you make? What are you the mastermind at? But I'm the master of the prep. I'm the one that does the barbacoa tacos, the moles, the pozole, <laughs> and the pescadillas. <laughs> Tamales Elena y Antojitos would not be what it is without them too. Y'all want some fire pozole? Y'all want some fire tamales, some moles? Y'all got to come through and check it out.
we are back from commercial break, and I am joined by 34-year-old Walter Adrian Sen, ceviche master of Los Angeles, cooking up some of the world's, I would say the world's best Peruvian ceviche here in Los Angeles. He just opened up his first restaurant, Ceviche Stop. Walter, bienvenidos. ¿Cómo está? Muy bien, muy bien. I'm happy to be here at the show. You know, excited to show you some some of my, my ceviches. Yo, tú no haces ceviches. You make art. Okay, <laughs> we're going to be talking Spanglish, so if you don't know English and Spanish, catch up. Pero aquí estamos. Uh, platícanos de tu estilo. What, what, what kind of ceviche are you making for us? Okay, well, today... You know, since Los Angeles, we have, you know, so many kinds of people, mm -hmm. you know, we have, you know, from people from Mexico, Colombia, all over the world. I actually, I'm actually doing a fusion between ceviches, you know, a Mexican and a Peruvian. Okay. I, I have a, my own uh, Agua Chile okay. ceviche that I'm making fusion. today. Fusion, we're a here fusion. for that, okay. Yeah, and another one, because we're doing two today. Okay. I'm doing a Nikkei, which is a term for Japanese Peruvian. Okay. So we're doing a Japanese and a Mexican fusion. Y'all, we're global. <laughs> Walter is taking us global today. Are y'all ready to take this trip? Because I am. Now, before we get excited, my mouth is watering. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> um, but I want to learn about your story first. So mm -hmm. Ceviche Stop just opened in Culver City. Yes. What has it been like to own your own restaurant in Los Angeles? Oh, man, it's great. Uh, my God, you know, pretty much because... I get to do what I wanted, what I love, my passion, you know. It's kind of like hard because, you know, being the owner, you have to be all over the place, you know. Um, an employee doesn't show up, you got, you got to be there. But the most, you know, fun part is that I just get to get down, you know, just do whatever I want to yes, do. Yes, get with, down. You know, create my, my own recipes, just. My own style. You You're know? the one controlling it. I don't have to it. deal with no one, no one, just me. It is el maestro de ceviche. <laughs> now, I know that ceviche stop started as a wooden carrito. Yeah. And then it shifted to a troquita. Mm -hmm. And now you have the restaurant, right? So yeah. what, what's the difference between having the, the carrito to now? <sighs> my God. What does it feel like? Oh, uh, my God. It's, you know, amazing. It's an amazing feeling. You know, it's like an accomplishment. Yeah, felicidades. Fel yeah. We're so excited yeah. for you. <laughs> now, who did you learn from? Because I'll tell you, I know LA Taco just had their member tasting. Again, if you're not a member, you should join because Walter threw down for a lot of our members <laughs> earlier this week. Uh, what is it? Who did you learn from? Who do you think your hands are magical? We're seeing this art here. We're seeing everything you're putting together. Mm -hmm. This looks like you're about to paint <laughs> something, right? Who yeah. did you learn making ceviche? from who's the og oh man uh my dad talk to us yeah. about him so he he was a chef and um i guess he i i, I looked up to him you know mm -hmm. all the time uh making his own ceviches and uh, I'm pretty sure well i'm sure he's the one that taught me everything you know like about food ¿Cómo se llama? Walter, como Walter, yo. okay, Junior. Same thing, same thing, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm the I'm the, they call me Junior, okay. <laughs> so yeah, um. But yeah, you know, just growing up, uh, just watching the way he cooks. And then, although he's a, a traditional type of chef, I'm more like modern, Okay. you know? You know, I remember we used to argue a lot, you know, because he's traditional, I'm modern, but yeah, anyway. What did he used to tell you? Like, what was the differences? Why didn't he like modern? Um, He said that I was playing the comidita, you know, oh, like. Oh, we know that game. Like, yeah. Payasito con tu comidita. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it is what it is, you know. Um, I guess he got used to the way of me cooking mm -hmm. and I got used to his way. Yeah. So what's know? the biggest lesson do you think you learned from him? Oh, the biggest, man, I can say that you you have to cook with love and passion. Okay. Love and passion. And we you see gotta, that evident in yeah, the food that you're yeah. making. You got you to gotta love what you do. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so now I want to shift to talking about Peruvian ceviche. Porque aquí ahorita nos vamos a pelear. Oh, my I'm God. Because I'm Baja California, Ensenada, Cabo San Lucas. My family, I always say that if you know, it's from Baja. Platíqueme de la diferencia. What is the difference between, I know you're doing a fusion <laughs> fusion thing here. What's the difference? Man, we're going to end up fighting here. <laughs> <laughs> I got nails, baby. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man, I guess... Man, I can start even from the chilies, you know, like, okay. uh, I mean, to me, the spices. Uh, the spices, I guess the flavor, you okay. know, it's a little different. Uh, I of, of, I love Mexican ceviche, uh, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do think Peruvian ceviche is a little 
more <laughs> more intricate. Say yes. it, say it with your chest, Walter. If it's you're más rico, it. pues, más rico. <laughs> it hits different. Pega. It's different. I I think there are two different kinds of uh, you know flavors. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Pero como te digo, you know, right here I got the agua chile. Okay. It's a fusion. I'm using the Peruvian tiger's milk. Okay. The tiger's milk, it's the juice where we marinate the, the fish. Okay. We call it tiger's milk. Okay. Vale. It's not real milk, <laughs> just in case. But like, um, Which tigers do you milk? From what region? <laughs> <laughs> I know. But yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. ¿Y de dónde estudiado usted? So you have to know, to make the kind of ceviche that you make, I know you mentioned you learned it from your dad. Yeah. Where, uh, what else have you studied? Because I know you know layers. Of, yeah. You've studied <laughs> ceviche. I studied ceviche on my own. Like, the we started, well, it was 2012 when I was tired of, you know, working in a restaurant. So mm -hmm. I told my wife, you know, let's do something fun as a hobby. And then uh, we built our own food stand, mm -hmm. you know, and then we just decided, okay, let's do it on Sundays. And But then became it became so popular. I remember the first Sunday we were going to open, you know, we were using social media and everything. Mm -hmm. We were going to open at 12, but that that Sunday, it was 11.30, and there was a huge line. Already? Yeah. Okay. What do you think brought the big line? I don't know. So we, oh, the fact that we were you we were doing Peruvian uh, blood clams, like blood clams, ceviche. ¿Y qué es eso? Conchanera, pues, oh, you know? Wow. Like conchas, a Peruvian style. Okay. You know? Yeah. For the folks watching, what is, what, what kind of ceviche is that? Why does But, it attract um, the people to come? To it's unique. Up? Not that many restaurants use it. Okay. And in Peru, they love it. So it was mostly more Peruvian people coming to eat it. Okay. But yeah, that's how it became popular. And then popular enough for us to, you know, uh, make it into a, convert it into a food truck. Mm. Se me está antojando de clan. <laughs> yeah, okay. you gotta come and check us out. <laughs> yes. So I want to learn how to make the ceviche. Okay. And I know you have a lot in front of us. Yes. So talk to us about what we have. Um, what are we making today? Okay. So today, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do some aguachiles. Okay. We're gonna use scallops, which I have here. Okay. Scallops and uh, shrimp. So we're gonna just start. All right, we're starting, y'all. We're wow. Start it. <laughs> Hello, um, welcome to the Food Network with Laura <laughs> yeah. on LA Taco Live with Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here and because of time, I already uh, have the onions diced with uh, cucumber, tomatoes, and cilantro. Okay. So we're just gonna. Mezclarlo bien Mezclarlo rico. Bien. Now, I also want to talk to you about the type of fish you use, because I know you pride yourself in the freshness of it. Yes. Which fish should people use and which fish should they stay away from? This is also where we may fight because Laura stays balling on a budget. So, yo como pescado catfish, tilapia, what's the right thing to do oh, and what's the wrong goodness. thing to do? <laughs> you already said it. We're going to start fighting We're again. We're going to fight again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't use tilapia for a ceviche okay. at all. It's you gloomy. Know? Why not? Uh, the flavor. Okay. It's like uh, muddy, you know, like okay. uh, not the type of fish that I will use in a ceviche. So we don't like muddy fish. Oh, we don't, like fresh yeah. fish. Okay. Fresh fish. Okay. You know, it, if it's fresh, use anything. Yo, But, yo hago puro imitation crab también con mi jaiba. Mátame. <laughs> jaiba, no, hombre. <laughs> We're a step above my kitchen here today. <laughs> Chef Boy Army is no not jaiba. helping. <laughs> so okay, aquí, so mezclo the scallops, I, the so, shrimps. Yeah, I got the scallops okay. and the shrimp. And um, with the onions, the cucumber, the tomatoes. So here I already have this blended, um, which is a uh, tiger's milk. Okay. But to make it, you know, more a little more Mexican, I added the jalapeño. Okay. And so leche de tigre con jalapeño. Yes. There's the fusion, the marriage between the tiger and the jalapeño. Yes. And then I have, uh, let me put this over here. And then make sure you, the folks can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you want to make know? sure they get to know what, how to make this. Yes, of course. And, um, Se me estaba la boca. Y'all, shout out to climate change because right now in Los Angeles, we can enjoy ceviche during the cold and in the hot. And we have mixes here, okay? So <laughs> look at this beautiful marriage. So we let that. Uh, one of the differences between also Mexican and Peruvian is just that we don't let the fish marinate. Okay. Oh, so you have to eat it right, uh, right away. Okay, so fresco. Si, sí, fresco. Okay. Because the salt and the lime will kill the protein of the fish in three minutes. Can you, we let that shit marinate for hours in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning something. Ma, 
Cambia el estilo que hacemos ceviche, güey. Ok. <laughs> yeah. So, we're gonna plate it. Okay. Because it's pretty simple. Once yes, we have everything we ready. we need a bowl. Okay, great. Yeah. So, we have the bowl here. We have to enjoy it right away, y'all. I hope y'all get jealous. <laughs> we'll just throw everything in there. I am on a timeline. <laughs> and then... So, uh, leche de tigre mixta, mixta con um, jalapeño. Is yeah. there anything else that goes into it? Or is it, is it no. your secret ingredient? Or... Uh, the tiger's milk. It's just a, uh, we blend fish, lime, fish, lime juice, uh, black pepper, salt, uh, celery, you know, no, garlic, Rica. and more secret ingredients. Okay, other secrets <laughs> that Walter cannot share because, you know, we got to keep no, it No, you tight. know, to be honest, um, I don't mind sharing it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I like when people actually replicate my recipes. You want to yeah. spread the love. Yeah, of we course. Love that. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> so we have some, here's some Peruvian kernels. Okay. No. ¿Cómo se llaman en Cancha, español? we call it canchita. Canchas o canchitas, okay. Yeah, that we're gonna pour this here. What does this add to the flavor? Crunchiness. Crunchiness, so the, the crunchiness, texture, the okay. The texture, you know. Mm -hmm. We're about to do some ASMR Let's in the studio. I don't think anyone's ready. Check this out. Okay, so we have corn. Corn. That's how big it is in Peru. Maíz. Maíz. Okay. In Peru, it's this big. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Se dice maíz en Peru? No, choclo. Choclo. Okay. So, Yo visité Bolivia una vez y comimos choclo. Yeah, choclo. So I know, I know there's similar things in the dishes, but I remember having choclo. It was yeah. a, a huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, we're going to use Peruvian seaweed. Okay. Okay. Acá tienes. Y'all, this is art. I know that we have a camera that is showing folks the dish. <laughs> if I need to put it somewhere once it's done, I will, because y'all need to see this. Smell this. This is the jilimo, the Peruvian chili. So ¿En chila mucho? Sí, este Uy. sí. Hasta eh. se me quemaron los pelos de la nariz. <laughs> en Perú, it, the chilies are not only spicy, but they're rich in flavor. Okay. Like, super. So rich. you're talking shit about jalapeños. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna fight afterwards, y'all. Oh Walter, we're gonna God. square up. Okay, we, jalapenos have depth, baby. Pepperoncinis, we have something. Man, I'm a, I, I guess by the end of the <laughs> the show, I'm gonna start losing all my Mexican followers. <laughs> ¿Cómo se llama el chile otra vez? A jilimo. Jilimo. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna lie, yo. Jilimo sounds cooler than jalapeno. And we're just gonna no add some miento. radishes. Okay. También para the texture. Texture, garnish. Okay, we're flavor. garnishing with radish. Yeah. And this then, looks like a pozolito también, ¿no? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> and uh, just, I made some uh, oil with cilantro oil. Cilantro oil, okay. And then you can either drink it with some plantains or uh, chips. Okay, so Your tell choice. me the difference. What do you think is better? Plantains. Plantains. They're both they're good. They're both good, you know? okay. I've never had ceviche with pl plantains, so... Here. Let's try it to see if we can get it on the camera. Where are we? <laughs> Where is the best place to put it? We are on the struggle bus. Can folks see this art? Wow. Wow. Look closer. Zoom into your camera. Oh, now you're looking at me. Okay. <laughs> so, aquí tenemos un Mexican Peruvian fusion ceviche. Yes. That is made with leche de tigre y jalapeño. And I can't remember the Peruvian chile. Ajilimo. Ajilimo? Aji, Ajilimo. Ajilimo. That sounds like what I'm going to name my next son. My first <laughs> son. Wow, I don't have any children. I'm tripping. <laughs> Ajilimo, vente away. Okay, so drink. we have here. Now, I have a choice between <laughs> eating it with a plantain or a tortilla chip. And we're not going to be basic today. We're going to be on team Walter's suggestion. So we're going to go ahead and try with a plantain. And in order to, for you all, viewers watching, to get the <laughs> maximum experience, experience i'm going to crunch right into the microphone okay let's see i want to get a taste of everything Matame. i don't think i'm gonna be able to get the picantito, eso see, sí. si te gusta. imagine if i have an allergic reaction to the spice oh I'm, my I'm a God, basic bitch Bueno, Está no bueno. Está riquísimo. Mm. <risa> oh sí. my gosh. Qué bueno que te gustó. The flavors, el choclo. Y uh -huh. platícame de esa nuez otra vez. Es como se dice cancha. Canchita cancha. o kernel. Oh, it's a kernel. So it's like a corn uh -huh. nut of sorts. Yes. But I'm not going to disrespect it by calling it a corn nut. It's way, <laughs> it has more depth. Um, this is amazing. Sí. 
Está riquísimo. ¿Crees que se fue la proteína? I think I did it within no, three no, minutes, no, no. right? Y'all, I'm getting all sí. maximum protein here because we're not <laughs> like Mexicans here. We don't let it marinate. We get it together. So I'm going to have one more bite because it would be disrespectful to not. Mm. I ¿Y wish... sabes qué? Mira, me estoy olvidando ahorita que como tengo todo acá, para darle su toquecito más mexicano, me estoy olvidando el, el, el aguacate. El aguacate. El aguacate, oh, hombre. Man. Walter, you're holding out on me. Oh my goodness, mira. <laughs> Lo tengo que probar otra vez. Sí. Oh, poor me. Pues no, pobrecita. A ver con mi agua bendita. Y no quieres. Pobrecita, ¿verdad? Que tengo que probar otra vez. Acá tienes. Okay, now I'm going to try it with a tortilla chip. Yeah, We're going to go back to the basic root. Yes. Keep it traditional. Okay. Got some aguacate up in this. <laughs> Also, Target, if you want to sponsor us, I believe the bowls are from you. So, yes. just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if they are. <laughs> oh, wait, puro aguacate. Oh, I can't double dip. Fuck it. Estamos para el network. Rico. Sí, me faltó el aguacate. Me quiero desmayar. This aguacate is really good too. It's premium. <laughs> sí, Yo. en mi casa. Before my mom scolds me with chewing my mouth open, give me a second. <laughs> The marriage between every single thing on this plate is wonderful. We got the choclo. We got the corn nut. Can't remember the name. We have the aj ajilimo. ajilimo. The jalapeno juice. The leche de tigre. Even the radish. I didn't try the seaweed, but I'm going to get down when we get off camera because I'm not trying to show yes. you all that side of me. <laughs> but yo... <laughs> if, I'm so excited. This is so good. <laughs> now, and I know this isn't the only thing that we're making. No, one more. Quick. We have one more. No, no, no. Take your time. We need these people to know. We need okay. everybody to want to visit Ceviche. Stop. So yes. I'm going to go ahead and put this here because I know the team will be upset if I don't share. Yes. But what are we making next? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'll leave some. I'll leave some memo. <laughs> He's been in Ceviche stuff every week. You're a regular, you're a regular fool. Me <laughs> okay, so here we have some uh, yellowtail. And ají tuna. I thought that was tomato, y'all. I thought this bowl was a she bowl thought of this tomato. Was tomato. <laughs> Can we talk about how like messed up my perception of good fish is? Wow. <laughs> you said yellowtail, ¿qué más? Y ají tuna. Ají tuna, okay. So aquí we're gonna uh, make a Nikkei, which is a Japanese Peruvian fusion. Okay. Can you talk to us a little bit about that history too? Like for people that don't know, how is Japanese culture infused within Peruvian ceviche? In Mexicali, I just want to point out too that um, a lot of Chinese migrants came and that's why there's a lot of Chinese food, right? Like we go to El Dragon, shout out to the one oh, near yeah. my mom's uh, birthplace. But what is that connection for people who aren't aware that that is a thing? Same story. You know, we got, they immigrated to Peru. Okay. And we also have some Chinese, Japanese, so, yeah. Same and the, thing. the marriage of flavors yeah. is everything, huh? Yeah, that's the marriage of flavors, you know, yeah. Cultures. They contributed a lot. Yeah, yes. we love it. We have so many. I, I think Peruvian food, it's, it's a fusion. I don't think, I mean, we do have so many ingredients, but we have some Italian, African, you know, it's, all over the place. There's all kinds of influences. All yeah, yes. This definitely. looks like we're about to make sushi up in here. <laughs> Actually, we did have some kind of sushi uh, at the event. Okay, right, yeah. <laughs> so what Walter's telling me is that I fucked up by not going. I'm sorry. Yes, I should have been did. there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's do this. So for this one, I have my regular tiger's milk. Okay. Made. Ese no tiene jalapeño. Ese no tiene jalapeño, pero tiene este. Por eso está rojo. Okay. So that's why it's, you know, kind of red. To my really Spanish. That's a pretty color. Yeah. Look at, that. Look at that leche de tigre looking all thick and cute. Little baby so pink. This. <laughs> we love aesthetics. Walter, what is your zodiac sign? Uh, uh, Gemini. 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 Walter, Walter Mercado, Doble aquí cara. con Walter Adriansen. <laughs> So we have double-sided feelings up in the ceviche because, you know, we got two personalities making the ceviche with us. Yeah, like this one. <laughs> okay. So la leche de tigre con aji tuna y... Se, ya se me olvidó. Este es aji tuna y yellowtail. Yellowtail, yellowtail. Okay. Yeah. One of my favorite fishes, by the way. Yeah, it's amazing. Fish. Um, fish. Maybe lo hacemos acá para que lo vea. Okay. Yeah, let's do it here. Perfecto. Okay. So for this one, I'm gonna use two types of, of tiger's milk. We're gonna use my tiradito sauce. I call it tiradito, tiradito sauce. Tiradito, por qué? Because we have some, um, there's another uh, Japanese influence. Tiradito, it's a, it's a way of ceviche, but instead of cutting the fish into cubes, 
it's kind of like sashimi style. Oh, so longer pieces. Longer I thought pieces. you meant tiradito like what I That's got my exes. That's where the word comes from, you know, tiradito es tira. <laughs> tiradito como mi ex o tiradito como la carne. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> no sé. Okay, we get it, we get it, okay. <laughs> También. <laughs> como los dos, como los dos. Como los okay. dos. So, acá vamos a echar. Got the tira, tiradito. Sauce. Oh, no, ese, ¿cómo se llama? O el tiradito, tiradito sauce, sauce. okay. Sauce. Qué bonito color también. It kind of looks like curry. Yeah. It's a beautiful color. Let me clean this up. Okay. And then we're going to put on top this. So leche de tigre mixed with the fish on top of the tiradito. Yeah. Walter is a Picasso with fish, y'all. <laughs> this looks like a painting. It just comes, you know, to my head. It's I love crazy. it. I wish this came to my head. I wish this kind of shit came to my head. It's not what comes to my head. Y vamos a usar maracuya. Maracuya. Lo vamos a tirar acá. Wow. Okay. Ooh, okay, flower. That's the uh, passion for flower. ¿Es el amuerto también? No. Uh, uh, it's just for the decoration. Fui I thought I had a nibble on the little leaf. Fui al cementerio y lo traje. <laughs> So, vamos a echar un poquito de cilantro. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok. Este, ¿dónde está? Ok. Se oh. Sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. Cilantro, sesame seeds. Wow. Y, obviamente, we want to make a proven también, ¿no? So, we got to always drop some canchita. Canchitas. Choclo. I keep forgetting I have to... Talking to the mic. Talking We're getting to into the it. mic. I'm so into it. <laughs> I'm narrating. Don't worry. Um, we're going to do some avocado too. Add some aguacate. Aguacate. I feel like aguacate We call it palta. Depth. You know in Peru palta? it's palta. Palta. Yeah. I don't know why people make fun Why do you think people me. add aguacate to ceviche? Like why do you think it's an integral piece? At least in Mexican ceviche, right? But what do you think it is? The depth? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. You know, the creamy, the, the creamy, um... Flavor. We I love creamy. It's... I started using aguacate because of Mexican ceviche. Okay. You know. Uh, you said let's let's borrow some flavors. Yeah, let's borrow some flavors, and uh, we're gonna do some uh, ponzu. Ponzu. I put that in my poke bowls. Some cilantro oil. Oh my gosh, y'all! Uh, of if course, you... the seaweed. I'm not sharing any of this with the team. I'm just going to let y'all know right now. Hands off this dish after I have my first try. Because of this. <laughs> Look at that pepper on top. Like a little cherry on top. And yeah, there we go. Ahora listo para probar? Yes. Este con tortilla chip o con plantain? Oh, I see seaweed too. Is the seaweed decorative? The seaweed? I know. No, of course. Uh, thank you. You said never, me. never. Okay, well, everything has a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and you can like cut it with the your... Uh, with the okay. knife. A little furikake, if yeah, we will. like some flakes. Okay. Just to add more Japanese into it. You can also add sesame oil. Okay. The chili sesame oil on top. I just didn't have any, you know. What is the flavor of the the tiradito sauce? Oh, you try it. You'll try, right you now. say, baby yes. girl, try it first. Yes. Then we could talk. Also, we all, every ceviche that we eat, you, you got to add the jam, oh. sweet potato. Dang. Yeah. And I really see, like, in hearing all the cultures that you're sharing, adding the chocolo, the canchitas, mm -hmm. the sweet potato, the aguacate, the cilantro. This really is, this bite is about to be global. Yes. Okay? <laughs> this is going to be everything. Let's see. A ver cómo está. I just need to show. I don't want it to drip over. But y'all need to see that. <laughs> Can you see that beautiful color? I want the top in that color. <laughs> what about you? You're, you're inspiring my fashion inspiring everything yeah. so i'm gonna go ahead and try oh contenedor no con chip oh no contenedor chip whatever you okay. know ceviche you just there's no rules you just eat it baby this i'm gonna get a little piece of the yam yeah a little bit of the aguacate <laughs> y'all aren't gonna get asmr with this it's gonna sound real it's gonna sound too you're gonna get too excited if i give you the asmr for this <laughs> Bueno, no. Walter. <laughs> I 
I'm not supposed to tap the table. I'm sorry, Karen, our producer. You're going to hate me, but girl. <laughs> That's why I'm keeping my hands to myself. No, wait. <laughs> this was, I was letting my palate or like deduce the different flavors. This, oh, apologies for the viewers. <laughs> this flavor of the sweet potato and the tiradito. That's the best tiradito I've ever had, okay? <laughs> tiradito. Aside from the X's, okay? <laughs> the choclo, the crunch, the creaminess of aguacate. Y'all, you need to go to Ceviche Stop yes. in Culver City that just opened up to try. And I'm sure you, this is just a little tiny taste of what yeah. you offer at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. We have Are these plenty. some of the most popular dishes? Actually, I don't even have this one at Ceviche oh, Stop. Oh, so I'm special, baby. Yes. How Taco Live with Laura, <laughs> exclusive edition. Yes, exclusive edition. What, what is, would you make this for special occasions? Yes, or? we we do have a secret menu. Oh, uh, what so is I get called? that one in a while. When I, when I rolled through the Culver City. Just ask for a Nikkei Ceviche. I just made that up right now with whatever I had. I didn't know I was going to do it, actually. But, he um, said he just made that up <laughs> with what he has. I keep tapping the table because I'm upset. Walter, <laughs> what? This yeah. wasn't planned out? Well, no, I just knew I was going to use it and I. You know, because you said, what do we got? We got tiradito, yeah. we got choclo, we got everything. Just Let's just make it happen. Like this was so good. Thank so next you. time I'm going to go and ask for a Nikkei. You should signature. go. Actually, I have one of my signature dishes, which is a cocktail. Okay. You know, cocktail. And it's uh, uh, fish and blood clams together with the leche de tigre. Oh and then I have some uh, fried calamari on top. And uh, we fried that into a yuyo, so it's pretty cool. I think I've seen the picture. Yeah, that, that looks one. Like a party in yeah. my mouth. So wow, that's so awesome. So what would you say is the most popular dish? So for people that want to visit Ceviche Stop, ¿qué les recomiendas? Oh ¿Qué está lo más riquísimo? ¿Qué ordenan? Lo demás, ¿qué se vende? Do you ever sell out of something specific? Yeah, man. And sometimes it's crazy. Uh, one time I almost uh, sold like. Oh, the whole fish. There was no fish at oh. Ceviche Stop, so it's crazy. Yeah, we're having like, a shortage over there at yeah, Ceviche Stop. Uh, That's but, what happens when you're a good restaurant, though, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, we're trying hard. Yeah, you, know, you like, could tell. Yo, yeah. this is so beautiful. Yeah. So, ¿qué recomiendas? What's a, if, if I'm taking Ooh, my boyfriend, my if I'm taking my... Or maybe my mom. Let's say oh, two different well, things. It, si quiero romantizar a mi novio, ¿qué lo ordeno? No, pues, si quieres tu boyfriend, <laughs> las conchas negras y los oysters. Baby, we're getting conchas negras and oysters <laughs> next. What up, date night? Okay, yeah, y yeah. Los, and for the in-laws, what about the in-laws? Oh, the in-laws, you can go easy, pues, con un regular fish ceviche. Okay. Mixto, we have a mixto. Ceviche mixto. Yeah, the... <laughs> and what kind of uh, what kind of fish? So you showed us you do ahi tuna. You showed us you do yellowtail. You did shrimp and scallops. We have what other fishes are you known uh, for? Sea bass. I know mahi. that you also are using imported Peruvian scallops. Is that what I just? Yeah, tried? yeah, yeah. Y'all, we really are having things from Peru. <laughs> yeah. I have a party in my mouth happening. Yeah. <laughs> That's really really cool. So at LA Taco, we always love to ask about you and your favorite food. So you just threw down. It's beautiful. Yo, shout out to your family who probably gets this often. Are they tired of ceviche or do they like it? Uh, no, they like they it. They like it? They're like, Man, Sometimes they get tired because, you know, ceviche every day. It's... Yeah, they're like, bring home the tiradito. Bring the leche de tigre home today. Um, but what is your favorite ceviche? Oh, my goodness. Mine, I think it's the blood clam with fish. My signature. Oh, so the one you make. What about yeah. the one someone else makes? Have you ever had a ceviche made by hands of someone else that made your eyes roll back and your toes curl? I, don't, I think I got that lyric from a song. <laughs> mm. Is that Petey Pablo? <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. That's why we started doing ceviches. Okay. Because there wasn't... I'm, I'm talking about Peruvian, just in case, you know, you already scared my Mexican people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think we started doing Peruvian ceviches because we wanted like a really good Peruvian ceviche. Okay, so he said, yeah. I'm the best. I'm sorry about <laughs> it. And you know what? I think you really are because I don't think I've seen anyone go beyond um, this <laughs> art this aesthetic even just the flavors um, we have a lot of really big ceviche masters in los angeles but you're definitely up there and i love everything you're doing with introducing people to all of these flavors yeah and every single thing that's represented in all of this mm -hmm. so aparte de ceviche we are called la taco yes ¿Cuál es tu favorito taco? ¿Te gustan los tacos? because we, we can end it right here if you don't okay Yo, we can stop it <laughs> <laughs> man you should have told me ever i had some tacos you know <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> Iba a traer unos tacos, you know. <laughs> I made my own uh, signature tacos. A memo had them. Memo, we're going to have you on the next segment to talk about them. What? Como los haces? So good. <laughs> Memo's a fan. 
Ya, yeah, so uso tortilla de, uh, de, de tortilla. I made it with a purple corn. Okay. A Peruvian purple corn. Okay. You know, that we call it maíz morado. Maíz morado. And then those are some shrimp, uh, shrimp, uh, shrimp tacos. Okay. ¿Y están fritos o están uh, uh, Estos tengo, uh, los, los, my specialty is stan fry. Okay. Do you mm -hmm. like deep fry like in Baja California? Shout out to Baja California again. Or what do you do? <laughs> You're like, yes, yeah. but no. <laughs> um, no, but I made, I made tacos with lomo saltado, octopus, you know, mm. I, I can get. Okay, do you have a, a favorite taco place in Los Angeles? Aside from the ones your hands make, because Walter said uh, I, he he's a master out here. I would feel the same if I could make food like this, right? Maybe. Like the ones I make are fire. But what do you have? You tried a truck that you really like? I a truck that you want to shout out? Guerrilla tacos. Guerrilla tacos. Okay, shout out to them. I know LA Taco <laughs> fam loves guerrilla tacos. Yeah, I like guerrilla tacos. We love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't tried that much. I don't even have time to get out of right. the restaurant. You're so. out here being a business owner, <laughs> yeah. and hustling. Oh man, yeah, yeah. So that's the most difficult part, you know, about being the owner. And, yeah. yeah, and you could tell that you really love what you do, and it really put your hands and your love and your passion, like mm -hmm. you said, inspired by Walter Senior, right? Um, yeah. Because we <laughs> see the love here. If you haven't checked out the reel that Memo uh, Fulermo del Toro, aka Memo Torres, made uh, <laughs> with the member tasting that we had with Ceviche Stop, please check it out. But thank you so much for thank being you. here with thank us. Thank you for having me. We, I can't wait to visit ceviche stop and really get down with the rest i'm about to be like give me all the secret menu and they're gonna be like girl calmadita calmadita um but we really thank you for being here thank you Folks, make sure to check out Ceviche Stop. Do not play around. You need to try this aesthetic, this love that goes into this plate. We're going to go ahead and toss it to break. We'll be right back. ¿Qué separa su torta ahogada de todas las otras tortas ahogadas en Los Ángeles? Que la hacemos con lo que debe de llevar, no en exceso de condimentos. Solamente lo que I quit my full-time job to be able to do these pop-ups more often, and it, it, I've never been happier, to be honest with me. This ring, connecting with folks in food is just so satisfying. LA Taco, estoy reportando en vivo desde la Playa Larga, aka Long Beach. We are with La Familia Lara, doing the next episode of Hanging with Taqueros, sponsored by the one and only White Claw. And I'm talking about ahogándonos en salsa picante y salsa jugosa, okay? We are here ahogándonos en tortas ahogadas with Tortas del Águila. We are seeing now that this pop-up is ran by women. Las Mujeres Lara, okay? Unas chuladas de mujeres. who are helping Miguel Lara prepare the tortas. Natalie, tell us about Tortas del Águila. Tell us about yourself. You were looking great, by the way. You better work. Thank you. So I'm Natalie Lara, la hija del tortero de Southeast LA, que no come chile. You know, my folks are from Guadalajara, and when you think Guadalajara, you think tortas. But yeah, my folks are the ones that are the masters behind Tortas del Aguila, for sure. Aquí estamos con el señor Lara, Miguel Lara, que es el tortero mero mero. <laughs> ¿Usted es alérgico? Ya no puedo comer chile. Me di cuenta cuando lo probé con una tortilla chip, sentí ahogarme. No lo prueba, pero lo cocina bien. Ahí estamos. Miguel, platíquenos cómo empezó Tortas del Águila. Mira, empezamos. Mi mujer fue la que empezó. Es la que me dio alas. Y yo quiero preguntarle, ¿cuál es su favorita hija y por qué? La más favorita, la mamá de ellas. ¿Sí? We love a romance. We love a romantic. Okay, ¿cómo se llama su esposa, la mujer? Irene. You heard it first, y'all. Irene Lara is the one who created these tortas. Come through and check them out. So we are here with la otra hija de la familia Lara. Please tell us about yourself. First of all, I have to say I love that title, La Otra Hija, uh, Mayra, a.k.a. I used to be the favorite daughter, and then my little sister came around, Alyssa, um, so now she's the princess, the favorite, um, but I'm the second oldest, uh, just been seeing my parents hustle for years, and to now see them sell their food, and just the joy that it gives them to feed people and to see folks enjoy the food has been such a pleasure to witness. That is so beautiful. Can you tell us where your favorite taco is from? Yes. El taco de trocito de puerco from San Juditas out in East LA. Yeah. Para chuparse los dedos. That's a fire taco. Can you tell us what your favorite taco in Los Angeles is? 
My favorite taco in Los Angeles is my dad's taco. I'm gonna be honest. Listen, I, I I love my parents' food. My dad also makes tacos, and I'm I'm a little basic, you know, just carne asada with some salsa roja, the cebolla, cilantro. It's just it's perfection. Yes. So Mayra's rocking the carne asada taco OG out here. We love it. <laughs> Miguel, ¿cuál es su favorito taco de Los Ángeles? De buche y en el mercado central. Pero te estoy hablando de hace. Uh, en 1979, 80, cuando era el mercado, que era, vendían verduras, tacos, y ahora... Well, he's commenting on the gentrification, Grand Central Market has changed. Mira. Pura cerveza. They didn't have that back then, y'all. They had tacos, straight up, for the community. <laughs> Fruit, vegetables, and tacos. Irene Lara taught him. Miguel Lara is out here cooking it up. Libras do things with love and sazón, okay? Don't get it twisted. Ella es la que me enseñó. Ella es la que me enseñó. All the credit to Irene. She's not here, but shout out to her. Reportando en vivo, sentiéndome como una torta ahogada, estoy aquí en la Playa Larga, in Long Beach. If you have not tried tortas ahogadas from Tortas del Aguila, we recommend you come and drown. Drown in the salsa, drown in the joy, drown with the family. Hang it with taqueros, sponsored by the one and only White Claw. We love you, LA Taco Fam. What is up, folks? Thanks for still being here with us. We are now joined by Lexis Olivier Ray, our LA Taco investigative reporter who brings that fire every week. I don't know why I made my voice go so deep. <laughs> but today we're going to be breaking down a piece that Lex just wrote for LA Taco regarding a flag that's waving high and proud at Grand Park, the Gatson flag. Lex, how did you find out about this flag that's waving in Grand Park? First off, thanks for having me again. It's good to be back. Yes, we love having you. We love everything <laughs> you write. So, yeah, the way I found this story was a reader actually reached out to me on Twitter. Uh, they were headed to work. They worked downtown, and they passed by Grand Park and thought that they noticed a Don't Tread on Me flag, which is that bright yellow flag with a coiled snake okay. and the words Don't Tread on Me underneath it. Um, so they hit me up on Twitter, sent me a photo, couldn't really tell what the flag was, but I was interested. So I was like, if you could grab a better photo or something, you know, let me know. Mm -hmm. They hit me at, hit me back a couple days after that with a better photo. And they're like, no, this is definitely the don't tread on me flag in Grand Park. Like, like it was the, speculation, but now I can confirm it's the don't tread on me flag. Exactly. And they were confused. They're like, what is going on? I was confused too. I think we both thought you know, maybe a protester or, you know, some individual put this flag up. Um, but there wasn't a lot of information, like immediate information about it. So for folks that are watching, what is the Gadsden flag? What is the Don't Tread on Me flag? So the Gadsden flag, it actually dates back to before the American Revolution. It was designed by Benjamin Franklin Lord. and was the uh, old ass flag is what it is yeah what you're exactly. telling me. <laughs> and it was essentially a rallying call to the colonists and uh, most historians consider it to be an anti-british pro-american symbol okay. and there was many different iterations of this flag these uh, flags with coiled snakes or rattlesnakes um one writer one columnist uh, described it as an early co colonial meme okay and there is a plaque at Grand Park that also illustrates what it is too, right? So it lets folks know what the flag is. Correct, yeah. And it's, it's part of uh, what's called the Court of Flags. Okay. So there's a, a, a bunch of different flags all tied to the American Revolution in Grand Park. And there are these plaques that go over the history. But, you know, if you're not in Grand Park there looking at this plaque, uh, or even if you are, I mean, it's it's a little bit tucked away. Yeah. You might not know why there's a don't tread on right. the plaque. I have Grand never Park. read a plaque in Grand Park. Also, I go there often. Right. So a lot of folks don't know. So it started around the time of the American Revolution or was created. How has the flag's context changed now in modern times? It's changed a lot in uh, the past Year, several years, especially uh, during the Trump administration, it has gone from being a, a symbol of American freedom to a symbol of anti-government movements. Since Obama was elected, right? Is yeah. what some say. 
Yeah, yeah. It really started with the Tea Party movement and now is associated with groups like QAnon, uh, Proud Boys, Oath Keepers. Basically, it's a flag that you see at these, uh, you know, far right extremism rallies or conservative rallies. Right. When you say QAnon, I just think of the people who think we're all going to become lizards one day, right? Or that the government is ran by lizards. So that's, that's why right? <laughs> it doesn't feel good, right? That don't tread on me flag. It's so beautiful to me the way that you were tipped to this, to write this piece is by someone who's watching. So shout out to all the folks who tune in or who show love to the, the writers, right? They know you're a great writer. They said, Lex, you got to get on this. Why is this flag waving? Why do you think this piece was triggering to that person, to one of your followers and, and to other folks? I know I read when I was doing research on the Gatson flag myself and just thinking about the historical context, I know that there's many spaces where folks have complained to the Employment Commission. Can't remember the name of the long acronym, which is terrible. I have it right here. Um, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. So a lot of employees have complained if they're in working spaces where folks are wearing the Don't Tread on Me logo on their hats, on T-shirts, in their workspaces. Why is this triggering? Yeah, so for the reader that tipped me off about this story, they didn't necessarily uh, feel that the flag had to be taken down or um, they weren't really trying to draw any conclusions about that, but they were looking for answers. They, uh, they told me that they um, you know, were trying to call different entities and, and get answers They were about, being investigated themselves. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and they, they couldn't get any answers, so that's why they reached out to me. Um, you know, I think uh, what the reader is looking for and what other people are looking for mm -hmm. maybe is a conversation around this. You know, uh, I think that people think that the public should be heard out. And, you know, if people are, are you know, there are some people that are for the flag and, mm -hmm. and think that it is a symbol of American freedom. But to other people, it's really triggering. Yeah, definitely. Especially because it represents and is connected to these groups that are racist, that are white supremacists, right? That are, I know that we saw images also of folks waving this flag at anti-vax protests happening around Grand Park, right? I know you mentioned the insurrection, too. Yeah, yeah, the... Gadsden flag was um, the, a, a rioter that stormed the Capitol on mm -hmm. January 6th was seen clutching a Gadsden flag early in the day, and uh, she actually ended up passing away. Yeah, so wild. Um, it makes me think of other symbolisms that the context has changed, right? So we know that the swastika, funny story, when my brother was in, it was earlier than, it was in elementary school. I forget what grade he was in. My mom grew up in Mexicali, Baja California, and my uncle was a huge fan of like peace, and he had peace signs everywhere. I mean, my mom was born in the 1960s. My uncle was about... 13 years older than her, her brother. Um, and so he had all these signs in his room, up in his room in Mexicali back in the day. And I guess one of them was a swastika. Not connected, which it probably should have been, but I guess for him, he, my uncle was not a Nazi. Um, and so my mom saw this sign and thought that it was a symbolism for peace growing up because that's what my uncle would preach, that it was for peace. And you know that the swastika was also connected to Buddhism. I don't know the historical context exactly of a swastika aside from the Nazi symbolism um but as an adult she was helping my brother with a project i think he had to do you know how they put us in projects we went to catholic school too um he had to put together a drum and she helped him she pretty much did the project for my brother trifling ass brother probably wasn't doing his homework and my brother got in huge trouble because my mom drew the swastika on the drum oh shit my brother a little brown chubby boy went to our lady of lords and said here's my project swastika drawn i don't think he noticed we were young i can't remember what grade he was in but essentially my mom had to come in and be like like, uh, uh, ESL, g give me a second. You know, like the swastika represented something different for my family and my brother. And this is a symbolism. So things change. Right. Yeah. Um, but we do, like you mentioned, like, what do you think writing this piece meant for you? Like what, what is, what's important moving forward about the don't tread on me flag waving in Grand Park? Well, what do we want to see happen essentially? I mean, first of all, I wanted to get some answers for the reader just about why I was there. Mm -hmm. And when I reached out to uh, the organization that manages Ground Park, they were actually surprised to find out um, that, you know, there's this flag. Isn't that, that wild? Like, yeah. When, how are you surprised if this shit is in downtown L.A.? Ground Park is so known for its visibility, really. Like when you're in downtown, you know where Ground Park. Millions Park. of people go to it every year. Right. For so many things. Yeah. Yeah. So they were they were surprised. They said, thank you for bringing this to our attention. And essentially, they're 
um, in contact with the county now, and the county is looking into the origins of uh, this flag in Grand Park mm -hmm. and, um, and investigating how they want to proceed going further. They're probably going to do the same research you did and I did, right? I mean, it's like, kind of funny, right? Because it's like, well, we know the origin. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, it's, it's a monument for the American Revolution, yeah. essentially, the court of flags. So uh, don't need to do much research there. But it does sound like they are taking some meaningful steps to, um, you know, reconsider maybe flying this flag in a public park. Yeah, definitely. Now, you know, I also love to address trolls sometimes. And somebody commented on the LATaco.com website under your article saying, at what point are we going to take down the American flag? All right. I'm speaking as if I know how, what this person sounds like. Um, or what if far right groups adopted the rainbow flag? Listen, sir, person, whatever that the, the rainbow flag isn't necessarily rooted in violence the way that uh, it isn't being adopted as that. And if they did, then maybe there'd be some context and we'd have to explain some things to folks. But these comments just trip me out sometimes. It's like some people don't wave the American flag happily right and that's okay it's their own like you're saying it's starting conversation um the american flag can be triggering to a lot of communities the same way that we're seeing that it is this don't tread on me flag is the gatson flag is so what do you say to the folks that comment like that um well i would say read the story first of all i mean people i think jumps to conclusions with a lot of they my read stories the headlines and they're like oh yeah right? <laughs> But I mean, even the headline, it's like, that's why it's a question. It's really about um, starting the conversation. I know that some people, um, you know, feel strongly about this flag and they support it. Um, you know, there's a lot of military families. There's associations with this flag in the military and uh, American history. But as you mentioned, uh, American history is pretty complicated. Right. And uh, regardless of which side you stand on this issue, you know, it is really a uniquely American symbol. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really about capitalism, and um, that's problematic for some people. So really just about starting a conversation. So yeah. I just encourage people to, to actually read the story. Yeah, and validating people who might who do feel some type of way, right? Because we know there's been problematic issues with all kinds of flags. The Confederate flag and Dylan Roof shooting up the church and, like, waving that in his Facebook, right? Like, we need to acknowledge that these things do make people feel um, and that it's important to address these feelings. So Yeah, I mean, uh, going back to the flag, I mean... Um you know, should point out that it was designed by slave owners, you know, right. Benjamin Franklin, as well as Christopher Gadsden, they were both slave owners. So, I mean, I feel like right there that, that will raise eyebrows for yeah. a lot of people. And I know in the article, you mentioned that the, the person who tipped you to the flag waving also said that she's not sure. It's like, like not taking down the monuments, which I'm all for that. Right. <laughs> I wasn't involved in any of it, though. But um, that it's not necessarily the goal. Right. But it's to talk about it. Like you keep mentioning. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for putting this piece out there. We love having you every week. Keep writing that fire because we're going to keep having you on, Lex. Um, and we're going to uh, wrap to go to the commercial break. But next up, we're going to be joined by one of Los Angeles' most beloved DJs, DJ Sizzle. So make sure you stay tuned and we'll be right back. <laughs>
We are back. Someone's knocking at the door. Do I hear the knocking? Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Ding dong. We are joined by the baddest bitch. DJ Sizzle is in the building. Woo! We need your setup here. Okay, see, there's the applause. <laughs> what is up, girl? Como estas? She thriving. She a little stressed. Como a mí me gusta decir, cansada, pero nunca derrotada. Nunca derrotada, <laughs> baby. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Every, as soon as, when this show first started and people asked, like, yo, what are your guests that you want to have? I said, DJ Sizzle. Yeah. Okay, and you were in the that list of original folks because you're so amazing. Oh, and when I think of LA Taco and I think of the community that, like, we want to represent and we want to, like, tell stories, I think of you and I think of all the beautiful people we've already had on. So oh, I'm so excited for this, this piece, too. this interview. I'm so excited and I'm so proud of you oh. and obviously to be here and sharing space and platica with you. So thank, thank you, you for so having much. me. Thank you so much. So we know, you know, I mean, we've we've talked. I know we, I wrote a piece in August about Sasson. Yes, you did. When you, look at me august was it august <sighs> no when did sasson open no it was july, not july yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i wrote a piece in july over the summer about sasson okay. hp uh -huh. which is the restaurant you and coco loco coco loco is dj sizzle's mom who you in in union with right opened the restaurant i want an update in the article, if folks did not read it, you're slipping, you're tripping. Um, it was such a beautiful moment for me to also meet with you all through Zoom. Y'all were busy. I feel like in the in that moment, things were happening behind you where you were like, we have this quick moment to talk, right? Because y'all were putting it on and making it happen. Mm -hmm. How has it been owning Sazon, girl? What has been? I want to bring up the Tinga de Res. I yes. visited on the opening weekend. And when I tell you that I wasn't a fan of Tinga growing up, I used to think Tinga was like, I have a funny anecdote. I'll share it real quick. My, my cousin and I would go to like these, uh, Breed Street in Boyle Heights. I don't know if you remember. Woo -woo. Right? Breed Street used uh -huh. to have Senaduria type vendors. And then we got, it got shut down. I say we like I sold, but it got <laughs> shut down, right? And I remember like knowing that it was with Chipotle. My mom rarely made it. I think I tried it once. It was too spicy. It wasn't my vibe. I was like, dude, I fucking hate Tinga. My cousin was like, why is she a bitch or what? <laughs> we thought it was a person. So I tried it once as a kid, never liked it. And then I tried it again because I said, you know what? Y'all make Tinga de res. Yeah. My mouth is watering just thinking yes. about that bite that I had. I think I had it in a sope. And I just want to say, my experience going and visiting, I haven't been able to go back because a bitch is busy, which yes, sucks. Yes, I'm with it. But it was so good. So I just wanted to put that out there. If you haven't visited Tazón, try the Tinga de Res. But what has it been like, girl? Uh, it has been a roller coaster, you know. It's obviously been a dream of ours to be able to have our own brick and mortar after being uh, street vendors for so long. Yes. But it's definitely been a roller coaster. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. I bet. Um, but it's been so fulfilling. Um, and it's been so beautiful watching this little dream of ours just continue to flourish little by little. And, you know, thanks to that article, that LA Taco article, you know, nos dice la patadita de la suerte. <laughs> and we started gaining more and more um, traction. You know, um, folks wanted to come and check out the restaurant. Yes. Um, you Who's know. Gone Wild posted it? Who's I lost <laughs> it. I, I lost it. I said, yes, everyone needs to know about this. When I found out y'all were opening, I said, <gasps> Hey, this is a tip to the LA Taco team. Can I please write this piece? Because I have I feel like when I talk about folks and knowing you, I feel like I've been following you your entire, from your inception. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's also so beautiful to see you out here fucking thriving. <laughs> so it's just like, for me, that was a piece mm -hmm. that was like, yo, I want to be able to like support and telling this story in the most beautiful way. Absolutely. And thank you for that. Yeah, we've known each other for quite a yeah. bit. You know, you um, we started collaborating when you were um, Cal State LA. Cal yeah. State LA. You know, I was CJing for y'all. And, you know, we've been able to keep that uh, relationship going and thriving. Yeah. And, you know, likewise, I see you now and I'm like, damn, that's my friend. Go Laura, you oh, know. Thank you, yes, that's of so course. Beautiful. See. So what has it what, what's going on with Sazon right now? I see y'all have events. Yeah, I want to let folks know about what's happening. So what can they expect in these weeks? Or what's been what's been popping at Sazon? Yeah. So, um, you know, since the article, we kind of let um, just the creativity flow. As you know, I'm also a DJ. Um, so I'm turning Sazon not only into a restaurant, but also mm -hmm. into a creative space yes. and a creative artistic space where people can come and showcase their talents, whether it's through DJing, whether it's through performance. 
or even to host their own events, right? So little by little, we're building that out. Um, now that, you know, we're kind of grabbing our footing or getting our footing, um, we're trying to do more programming in there. Yes. Um, so now we do um, brunch every Sunday. And every Sunday, you can either find a DJ, you can find, um, you know, local trans um, uh, queens. Uh, you can also find uh, mariachis, right? So you got everything. We got everything. I mean, as you know, it's something that I grew up up and and it's a side of my um a sazon, right we also do cumiaton, which is very similar yes. to that so um what i'm doing i'm merging two of my passions and you know doing this new project which i'm excited for because i get to do it with my mom yes and i coco loco is popping i we talked about our moms needing to meet and they okay. really do we should have a segment where they just talk to each other Yo, and cook something or honestly, dance or something that would be a dream i wish i could true. dj but i'm not a bad bitch <laughs> like you so <laughs> But let's shift to talk about Cumbiaton. I know there's sometimes there's a lot of uh, folks who are new to the guests that we have, yeah. which you shouldn't be. But in case they don't know what Cumbiaton is, break that down for us. What was that journey like in starting that? I, it's so much. I feel like just saying that it's an event that hosts parties is not enough. So talk to us about Cumbiaton. <laughs> yeah, so Cumbiaton is um, my other, uh, my first baby. Um, it is an intergenerational cultural movement, um, which started in Boyle Heights um, and since then has branched off into the Bay Area cities like Seattle, New York, um, you know, soon Chicago. So it's a wow, national movement. I didn't movement. know you were going to yeah, the Midwest. Yeah. Okay. 2022, let's go. You Apuntate, girl. Work. Let's go. Right. Yes. Oh, my God. I'll take the flight. <laughs> LA Taco, uh, Chicago. Right. I'm, I'm just, just saying. Just a quick little visit. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, trying to do... Um, uh, con trying to continue to do that we took a break because of the pandemic right um so for those of you who don't know we are an artist collective which is composed of djs photographers illustrators mcs and um we basically throw events that are for and by our communities mm -hmm. right um most of us, if not all of us, are undocumented, queer, women, trans, um, marginalized folks that mm -hmm. want to be able to not only um, continue to um, uh, just represent in, in the dance floor, but represent mm -hmm. behind the DJ booth, behind the lens, behind every aspect of production. So that's what Cumiaton does. And, you know, if you're in the area here in L.A., we're going to have our comeback, our major comeback, uh, December 17th. Okay. Um, Posada Tropical, girl, you're invited. That's a Friday. Yeah. Yes, that's uh, I'm going to try to be there because yes. Yes. Um, so that's our major comeback and it's going to be in uh, our neighborhood in Boyle Heights at Don Quixote. Um, and, you know, we're expecting the event to be sold out. So if you haven't purchased your tickets, please do so already. It's going to be lit. We have DJ Von Kiss. We have Nino Francois. We have Gracie D and Tiki's along with DJ Funky Caramelo and yours truly and all the cumbiaton That um, is crew. a I just got goosebumps just thinking about the music and the fun time that's about to be yeah girl the way i like to describe it it's a party where all of your favorite cousins are at and right. we are your favorite cousins so come through <laughs> i love it girl thanks for breaking that down of what is it like to be by coastal in that way i know you, you said new york oakland now chicago yeah what does it feel like when you travel to these places so i'm over here claiming you because yeah you know, Boyle Heights, East Lowe, like in that area <laughs> yes, repping, right yes so, absolutely what does the love feel like when you go out there and it's popping because in order for you to have success in all these places shows that this is bigger than los angeles right this is yeah. something that folks want happening in their communities right and you're creating that you and the team are creating that for people yeah. what does that joy feel like when they receive it you know what it's it's still unbelievable it will never just feel like oh yeah this is you know this is just regular life um, more than anything it's just so humbling um, and so fulfilling to find community in all these spaces that again it just you know we could be in Seattle we could be in New York but in a pocket of a community it feels like um, you know j you're just with family you're just with community yeah. and I love that um, because it's the music it's the culture it's the art that brings us together mm -hmm. um, and that's what we try and continue to uplift you know especially like when it's um, in male dominated spaces mm -hmm. right it's really important that we continue um, to create these spaces where queer uh, women um, folks can feel you know empowered and feel safe right and that's so beautiful thank you friend Get emotion. yes so what inspires you and influences that space what would you see as your main inspiration to make that happen um it's Is at, it your own family at the root of everything it's my family it's my mom you know it's my community Boyle Heights East mm -hmm. Los Angeles you know we are such a vibrant community and I am truly 
truly blessed to have, you know, the best of both worlds. For me, I have, you know, my mom and my family who taught me and really um, instilled in me the love for cumbia. And then in Boyle Heights, I have, you know, the cholos, the, you know, tios and tias, um, you know. The who, whole crew. The whole crew, <laughs> you know, who instilled the love for like, you know, oldies and funk and everything else that East Los Angeles and Boyle Heights is compromised of. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, I carry that badge with honor wherever I go. I'm like, yes, I'm from Boyle Heights. And I know there's like this, um, you know, people from either uh, East LA or Boyle right. Heights where like, we draw the line Yo, on I Lorena. I have gotten to some like, fights, right? Because I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm East. I love East Los. And I was taking a picture of Mariachi Plaza. Yeah. And people were like, that's Boyle Heights. I was like... Yo, fuck you yeah. Like, can I have some joy? I meant, like, all of, all of it, okay? Right. But also, I respect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I, I grew up in They're City different. Terrace, They're so different. I'm, I'm, like, in a whole other little yeah. hill, right? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're different, but I rep for both yeah. equally, you know? Because I, I think for me, it's like, we are really east of the river, east mm -hmm. of the L.A. River. We ain't that Echo Park East. I, I and Some people try and be like, oh, Echo Park is East L.A., bitch? Where? Right. When? Relax. Who said that? Right. Um, you know, but I, I rep for both because, you know... I, I've been lucky enough to be raised on, you know, both both neighborhoods. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's super amazing. And, you know, I, it's just an honor to be able to um, find camaraderie and like really put on for the cities wherever I go. We love it. I'm going to ask one more like how you balance it all question. And then yeah. we're going to jump into the personal because we want to know you just sizzle <laughs> beyond what people see because we know all you're right, out there. Right. We know people know you. So we're going to get down to it. But first, I want to ask, girl, how do you balance it all looking fire? Because I see you every time you post. And I know I see the hustle. I want yeah. you to know that I see you, Thank you boo. and I see it flourishing. And that makes me so excited. But how do you balance being a DJ, a business owner? And I feel like Cumbiaton is another business. Absolutely. Right? Like, what does the balance look like for you? And what advice do you have for people who are pursuing these their passions in this way? Um, I wouldn't be able to do any of this on my own. Um, so I will start there. I think the balance is creating a solid ass team, a solid ass, um, you know, group of people, um, preferably from your community because you're investing back into your community. Yeah. You're helping others onto, uh, your platform or you're sharing that platform. Right. Um, so I wouldn't be able to do this without the solid ass teams that I have, um, at Cumiaton, at Sazon. And honestly, like something that I've learned just trying to be, you know, a restaurant owner and like uh, event production, um, you know, owner and me as a DJ is just trying to find balance. And like no matter how busy I get to try and carve out no matter how tight my schedule is, the moments and pockets of, you know, for me, um, for example, I'm. I'm a cancer, so I'm always attracted yes, to the water. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, every time I feel overwhelmed, yeah. I go to the beach or I, you know, I take some time to really do something that um, I feel that restores that happiness in mm -hmm. me because I can get carried away with all the stress, todos los problemas del mundo, que right. Lord knows we have them. It's like, you if know? it's not personal, then we got to see some fucked up shit going on Absolutely. in the world, right? Absolutely. So yeah. it's been super uh, important for me to continue to carve out these little pockets of happiness, even if it's for like a few hours hours even if it's if for a day i'm yeah. like you know what i'm bye i'm That's leaving beautiful don't, Look don't at talk you to me boundaries, yeah though. you know yeah so you mentioned the ocean but what else brings you happiness like what do you do for fun i know sometimes i just i'm I'm so embarrassed by my guilty pleasure show, which is Gilmore Girls. Uh -huh. But sometimes my self care means getting on the fucking couch and watching two episodes with a fire ass meal from somewhere. Yeah, that probably isn't good for me, or you know, <laughs> I fuck that idea. But you know, like that's my joy. So what brings you joy? That's fine. Um, similar to you, I love to go out and eat. Okay. Um, I love um the wineries. I'm a ghetto bitch who loves to be up in the wineries. We like, love what's it. up? We in here. You know what I mean? Temecula or where? Um, actually, we're talking Livermore. We're talking Napa. We're talking. Talking, no. <laughs> oh, you travel far. We don't go. I'm over here looking into the Groupon to make you a uh, limo tour. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, uh, by the way, uh, if you're into wine and stuff, you could go to Livermore. Um, they're a fraction of the price as they are in Napa. Wow. Um, yeah, Napa's super overpriced. I mean, whatever. They got good wine. But, you know, yeah. um, it's you, you can find little, like, getaways um, to find. Uh, and that's next on the list. One day, I'm going to put it out here on LA Taco. We are manifesting to own a winery. Yes. No sé si va a ser aquí o en Valle de Guadalupe. I don't know, girl, but... We're going to make it happen. I see we're it gonna make it happen. I'm going to yeah. be acting like Walter Mercado. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> 
That's cáncer. So cool. Lo veo. <laughs> yeah. Veo muchas pedas de vino en right. tu futuro. Yes. <laughs> I love that. So wineries is your favorite pastime. Yes. We saw you got into roller skating during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, What was yeah. that like? I secretly want to do a segment with you and Mala. Oh, my God. But I don't know how to fucking roller skate. It's so fun. And I tell you that yeah. I almost broke and I, I'm dramatic. I am a hypochondriac. I went to a roller skate event. When I was a lot younger, and I swear to you, the pain that I felt on my elbow when I fell, I said, it's broken. Call 911. We need to fix this. Yeah. It wasn't. Girl, it wasn't even fractured. It just okay. hurt. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. I, I'm scared, so I'm scared. But what was roller skating like? Do you, do you still enjoy doing that? Yeah, I love it. It was definitely one of those things that, um, you know, those interesting hobbies you kind of just picked up during the um, pandemic. Yeah. I used to be, um, you know, a, a big tomboy growing up. So I was into, like, the roller blades, is mm-hmm. it? Um, well, you do the inline. The, the inline okay. ones, right? So when I was smaller. And then, you know, I let that go. But then pandemic came and, you know... Uh, I picked up the pair of roller skates again, and it was so much fun. Neta que si duele. Uh, I'm yeah. not gonna lie, me dio unos putazos right. que neta. I was like, damn, I broke my ass, right. you know. <laughs> Too much. I broke my butt. Um, I said I was gonna look like Russell, like all padded up. Yeah. If I ever do it, because I'm terrified of falling. Girl, ask Mala, ask the skating crew. Like you would see me out there with like a toallita, like a whole ass gym towel on my butt. Because ever you since I fell, yourself. yeah, I was like, girl, I'm, I'm, you know, I ain't young, right. I ain't young, and a trip to the hospital right now con todo lo que está pasando, no, right. we not you here know? for that. Mm-mm. So I was out there looking like a Teletubby um, roller skating, but you know what? I was having fun. Right. And you looked, fu- you looked yeah. like you were having fun. Yeah. And y'all look great doing it. That's literally i'm a libra uh-huh so aesthetics is everything yeah when i'm I like yes fashion uh-huh. i'm just like wow look how cute i would look in those outfits like i want to match i want to be like them uh-huh. and then i think about how ridiculous i feel like i'm gonna be on the side with my like iphone taking pictures of everybody and then taking cute <laughs> selfies but then like grabbing onto the rail like i'm not I that's can't. how it starts though like i, I uh, everybody will tell you you know what i mean unless you're just like a prodigy at skating um that's how it starts and yes you're gonna yeah. fall but you know what it's, it's so incredibly fun especially at the beach girl you're yeah. like just cruising bumping music you know it's it's a total vibe it so i encourage good. you it looks mm-hmm. like it i'm here yeah. for it so next we want to talk about um, just your personal life. So what yeah. you you got a boo. I feel like you're going to bust the Issa Rae up on us. Because <laughs> I feel like I see a little shoulder and I'm like, yeah. ah! again, Libra. <laughs> Me emociono con el amor. Uh-huh. I just want to say that I love seeing you in love and sharing. Like, girl, you've been going on these getaways. I said, were you yeah. in Hawaii? Where yeah. I don't know where you were, but you uh-huh. were going on these tropical getaways uh-huh. with a love, an amorcito. Mm-hmm. Is this love new? I mean, whatever you're comfortable sharing. Yeah. We love we love seeing yeah. it, and by we I mean me, and I'm sure a lot of people. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This love is an official fiance. <laughs> I'm like I can spin. I didn't even do my nails. It's okay, but... girl. You're a business owner. You're popping regardless. <laughs> um, yes, uh, he is a fiance, okay. as I like to call him, um, and he's super amazing. He's half uh, Puerto Rican and Mexican, so I get the best of both worlds. Okay. Um, and you know, I I'm just really thankful to be able to have such a strong, committed, and stable partner. Mm. that Taurus energy man Taurus cancer Yo, you know same. what I mean yep. I also, Taurus are like stubborn as hell a yeah. lot of my best friends and close people are Tauruses so I never thought I would like date one but I feel <laughs> you like that's the ability it's grounding that, a little yeah. bit it's a little mm-hmm. you know it's a little hard a little stubborn <laughs> a little something <laughs> I love it that's oh so you're cute. so silly <laughs> I really am like wow oh, thank uh, you, Sizzle's boo. just about to pop, us on, pop up on us and be like oh I just had a photo shoot with a dress and yeah. my friends like you <laughs> but it's so beautiful Beautiful huh. to see you in love. Thank you, Bull. Gracias. And I think, you know, um, it's one of those things that I was single for a really long time, mm. you know, and just kind of didn't really want to settle down. And I mean, the lifestyle that I lead, you mm-hmm. know, or that I led prior to that I live now, right. even with the restaurant, I'm like, bitch, it was one thing. <laughs> you got to um, find the right person, yes. though. And, yeah. and a person who understands, you know, that, you know, you're dating a boss ass bitch, baby. Right. Like you're going to, you know, sometimes you're going to have to make sacrifices make sacrifices but you know what, what it is we're gonna be there for each other when it's time to be right. there for each other and that's so yeah. beautiful mm-hmm. i just wanted Thank to bring that up because i just love seeing it and i love how you give us little snippets because you know i'm your fan yeah so sometimes you'll post <laughs> no and i like, didn't know that i'm over here like oh can we see their face can we see their shoulder <laughs> what they wearing yeah, yeah i love yeah. it that's beautiful 
So you talked about like love and like just the life you're leading. What does mental health look like for you? Like taking care of your mental health. (laughs) I also wanted to get into knowing like the high school you because I always love talking about people's transitions. I was ratchet. Uh We love it. Uh Do you rep a Boyle Heights High School? Did you go to high school? No, I actually went to Lincoln High School. Okay. So we were bussed out. Um, I actually grew up um, in the Hazard Projects. Okay. So if y'all don't know, it's like that's borderline uh, Boyle Heights and um, and Lincoln Heights. Mm -hmm. So we were bussed out to uh, Lincoln High School. Um, and yeah, you know, I was a junior ratchet. Now I'm a full on senior ratchet and I'm here for it. You right. know, Thriving. If, yeah. If you got any questions, I got you. Um, but yeah. Uh, what was the question? I was, <laughs> I'm the kind of interviewer that asks like 17 and yeah, one I'm question. Like, yeah. So my bad. I get excited. Okay. No, but just like, what do you think your biggest transition has been? What advice would you give? I'm really, I do a lot of work on my inner child. Right. I like always think right. about like how I'm healing the right. eight year old Laura that went through a lot or like whatever age I was. My therapist is always like, how old were you when you felt that feeling? And I'm like, damn, bitch, every age. Oh, like that was eight. That was 10. That might have been 12. Like right I'm now. Healing. I'm feeling that right now. How about that? <laughs> I feel like I'm healing every version of me. But right. just because I've never known that, I've never asked you that. And I know you're from like neighboring communities. Right. What advice would you give to younger DJ Sizzle? Like what advice would you give to yourself back then? Yeah. And it's an advice that I would give myself today mm-hmm. even is don't doubt yourself, girl. You know, don't doubt yourself. There are so many things in this society will have you questioning your own gifts you know Mm. but um i think each of us know deep inside you know the um whatever journey that we're walking in whatever path that we're Mm -hmm. walking in just know that you know whatever choice that you make is right for you and trust that the universe has your back you know in some way or another even though it might feel like everything is shattering around you which you know when you mentioned mental health Mm -hmm. i feel like for me the past three months have been just an absolute it's, it's been wild. Challenge, it's been wild, I I, you know, um, but I'm coming back to self and really just kind of, um, you know, trying to love and, and nurture that that inner child, you know, yeah. that little hood girl that grew up undocumented, grew up in in, in Boyle Heights and consistently uh, feeling uh, like the, um, you know, the, the little oddball out. Um, but I would definitely say that those little oddball gifts are the ones that now I'm sharing with the world. And they're, they're like, yes, bitch. And I'm like, you're going to make oh, me cry. That, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I see you and I hear you and I'm on that journey with you. Tell That's me so beautiful. Thank mm-hmm. you for sharing that. I feel like you're speaking to me, too. Like, I feel like I'm looking at a mirror. Like, yeah. right, bitch, like weird ass kids. But look at like now everybody's praising <laughs> us. Like, where were you when I was eight, bitch? Right. <laughs> Clowning me. Yo. But now you like me. <laughs> Yo, we were literally probably those little girls in class that like always got in trouble for talking too much because i knew Yo, that was my first attention yeah i literally yeah. just wanted to talk to everybody around me and not look at me <laughs> i like talk live with loud ho <laughs> jackson what's up yeah. for that detention <laughs> always in trouble Yo, i can't but fact yeah facts. i love that um look at me i got distracted because i love everything <laughs> that you're saying um oh uh-huh. but did you think you were going to be doing this like when you were younger maybe in high school or even elementary school like what did you think you were going to accomplish what were your dreams back then and do they connect to what you're doing now yeah um so i my dreams back then um i used to be a cheerleader um okay. and i thought that i was gonna be you know um in in the cheerleading world there's like the nca national cheerleaders association uc whatever the hell it's like these major cheer companies that you get to work for Mm -hmm. but um i was undocumented so when i tried to apply for a job there i was turned down because i didn't have a social security number so i was like damn dude like now what that was my like that was that was my dream i just wanted to be a cheerleader for the rest of my life right (laughs) Um, I wanted to be a performer, um, but little did I know life had other, um, you know, options and other um, ideas for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, did I think I was going to get into DJing and build a career and build a movement and then build a restaurant off of DJing? No, I didn't. But I am super glad, you know, they were like, nah, girl, we can't take your little undocumented ass. And I'm like, fine, I don't need the dress anyway. Right. And look at you, everything you've accomplished. <laughs> yeah, thank Isn't that you. Isn't wild how life yeah. turns out? Like the shit we think yeah. we want to do. I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. Yeah. So I still feel like I would want to be a paralegal at some point just because okay. of what I enjoy. But mm-hmm. but then life hands us shit that's like, no, nah, you're good for this, 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 and this. And you are killing it in every yeah. stage, I feel like. Oh, thank you, boo. So Gracias. Emocion. I just wanted to know, like, what, what did little Sizzle want to be? You thank know? you. Gracias. What is the best? So we're going back to DJing because yeah. I know you are a talented. You were talented on the turntables. Okay? Hey. You, you 
you get me dancing <laughs> Monday de melancolia yes I'm telling you the first one you ever had I tuned in I cried I had like my drinks lined up I had a whole ass party <laughs> by myself I made sure like shit was connected to the big speaker uh-huh. um, what is the best party you've ever DJ'd mm. like that you threw down like that you remember like damn this shit was fun I know sometimes it is a job, not sometimes. It yeah. is a job, 100%, right? Yeah. But what has been one that you've enjoyed? Was it a quinceañera, a wedding? Um, you know what? I think honestly, all of the parties where I just get to um, you know, play what I want and the people are vibing with me mm-hmm. are just the best parties for me, um, which is why I continue to DJ, even though there's so many things happening in my life. Yeah. That's my happy place, you know? So many people will see me in the DJ booth and be like, girl, come dance, or like, come on, uh, we want you to have fun. I'm like, I am having fun. This is my happy place. Behind the booth, yeah. and making y'all dance. Yeah, <laughs> seeing y'all happy makes me happy, you yeah. know what I mean? So any party that um, I get to just jam and, and vibe out, and you know, that can be, anywhere and i'm super grateful to be able to um have you know just played on so many stages um and hopefully i continue to play on so many big old stages you know so those are the those are the manifestations for the years coming yes and to manifest who is like someone you would love to share a dj like a space with like me a dj space a stage (laughs) yeah um there's so many people but um so many people but none of them can come to mind Orita. i'm like Ugh. i stumped you i stumped yeah, you like, my Ugh. bad everyone yeah. <laughs> anyone and everyone yeah okay. honestly whoever has the best vibes come through roll up i love that you're yeah. down for everybody yeah okay so we like to play a this or that edition for different folks that come on and okay. for you i figured it'd be fun to do a music one all right so whether it's you playing the song or you shaking that ass to the song hey we're gonna go ahead and give you two options you're gonna let us know what okay, okay. so between this or that between Juan Gabriel or Jose Jose who are you choosing Bitch, Jose Jose <laughs> really yes. why okay listen um and you hit like a softener I'm like <laughs> uh, when I wrote um, it down I said Ooh. <laughs> yeah 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 don't don't get me wrong I love me some Juan Ga. I love like I I feel he's one of the best artists all around not only a composer a singer mm-hmm. a performer everything but I feel like for me I love like a, a crooner voice and I feel mm-hmm. like Jose Jose really had that like type of voice that he could just sing and like as soon as he hit a note i'm like bitch right dude feeling. as soon as i hear the yeah. get three step for this but i start crying immediately yes. sometimes yes. i just play it to to invoke that feeling yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Girl, i feel that i'm a cancer i'm a sad girl at right. heart you know right. so i am all about jose jose love yeah. it okay jose jose what about between the electric slide and the caballo dorado <sighs> you know what electric slide with beyonce because i love her okay. um, and a funny uh funny i guess fun fact um out of all the times that i played caballo dorado which have been probably like near a thousand plus times i've never really been able to get the the dancing thing right okay. like i'm one of those people that will jump you're up like and down and like yeah you're the people that uh, piss me off because yeah. i'm like about the way <laughs> just kidding <laughs> honestly i'm that person just doing my own thing okay I don't so know. electric slide yeah okay last one uh-huh suavemente or tu sonrisa tu sonrisa really tu sonrisa. think about it okay listen and this is what i tell everybody anytime i drop it i'm like yo if you don't think that you're as slick at, at a pickup line just listen to right. the fucking songs Algo listen to elvis crespo será tu sonrisa right. en tu cara me da vida. i just got goosebumps yeah that you know you i'd be like <laughs> All right, you can get it. You know, we love it. So, what, what is the okay? And for the final question, because uh-huh. our producer is telling us to wrap. My bad. Okay. <laughs> I get excited talking to the amazing guests. What uh-huh. song gets everybody dancing immediately on the dance floor? If you know that the party's feeling a little, you know, like people aren't really getting down. We need to get something to get the party going. What song are you playing? Um, for me, it's always been one of my personal favorites, which is Oye. Uh, oh. Sonora Dinamita. Anytime. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm it's so that. beautiful. Oh, oh. Are it you is. kidding me? Esa o la vida es un carnaval de yes. Celia Cruz. It's like, yes, because ultimately we're all going through things in life. But you know what? There's music. There's community. There's a dance floor. Let's just shake it out on there's the dance joy. floor. There's uh, joy. I love it. Thank you so yes, much for course. being here with us, DJ Sizzle. Thank you for having As she me. mentioned, on December 17th, we're having Posada Tropical. Yeah. Yes. Get your tickets now. Where can they find the tickets again? They can find it on Eventbrite uh, dash Cumbiaton. Or you can check us out on Instagram or our website, cumbiaton.org. Or 
or on Instagram, cumbiaton underscore Ellie. Yes. So make sure to get your tickets. I'm going to try to get some right after we're done with this. But get down. Make sure you're out there shaking that ass to DJ Sizzle. Thank you for being here with us. We're going to wrap to another commercial break and we'll be right back. Gracias. I love Ellie Taco. <laughs> Right. The science behind the, the blue corner, you really gotta dial it in. Yeah! We're gonna tell you stories about food, about culture, politics, film, music. I love LA Taco. I love LA Taco. I love LA Taco. I love LA Taco. Put some marketing skills right there. <laughs> something catchy, something different. Two pounds of love cut in half. What happened to the truck? We just returned it. I wanted to burn it and break it down, but I'd have to purchase it. Ah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Subscribe to LA Taco. I want you to subscribe to LA Taco. Become a member of LA Taco. <laughs> Yo, what a beautiful conversation with DJ Sizzle. That's my girl, yo. So make sure you get tickets to Posada Tropical because that shit's about to be a popping ass party. But to close out with today's LA Taco Live with Laura show, we are joined by Fulermo del Toro, a.k.a. Memo Torres. Fu, what are you doing? Finish this fucking Walter Ceviche, man. I'm so fucking done with you. This fool, I bet you they didn't leave me any. All I had was one bite and I wanted some more of that Let to the Tigre. Man, this shit is so bomb. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Mm. Y'all, Memo mm. is one of our, he does everything I feel like at LA Taco, but most recently visited a shrimp farm with Javier Cablar, Cabral, our editor at LA Taco. Talk to us about that video you made, about the piece that Javier wrote. What, yeah. what, what, what was that? Break it down for us. I have a lot of questions. Yeah, so Javier, he, uh, he hit me up. He's like, hey, fool, uh, you know, there's a shrimp farm down in like uh, Downey. Downy of all places. Of all places, right? Downy <laughs> coming up on the map. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he hit me up. He's like, hey, we're going. I have never seen a shrimp that beautiful. I mean, so I am over here cooking the ones that shrink to the size of my pinky when I'm cooking <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> So you, that's you got that couple noodles shrimp, right? right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those baby shrimp, though. So this guy's farming shrimp indoors from uh, from babies. Wow. I mean, those are about like six weeks old right there. I mean, no, they're less. They're like about 17 days old. And uh, from there, he moves them onto another tank, and then he calls them the teenage shrimp. Right. We got all ages of shrimp at yeah. the shrimp farm. Yeah. So it takes them, I don't know, about a couple months okay. before they mature. That's the teenage shrimp you see right there on the screen. 
Um, you see they're about the size of your fingers. And this is uh, Steve Sutton. So it's an indoor shrimp farm, and um, he's got he's got two systems in there, two water systems. He has an oceanic system, mm -hmm. and then he's got this like swampy system that looks dirty and muddy and like nasty. It's just full of bacteria. Yeah, because that's what shrimp do, right? They love to eat bacteria. They eat all the shit at the bottom of the sea, <laughs> you know. So he replicates and we love that to eat system. It. <laughs> oh yeah, we do love to eat the shit. But anyways, um, yeah, he he's got this whole crazy farm in there, and uh, right there you see that shrimp jumping right there. That crazy. Food, I was watching this video and I said, that fool is a Jordan of shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> These fools are trying to escape, not yeah. knowing that they're about to die and be a part of my awachilis. Yo, those things but... jump far. They're like four to five feet. Like, right. bam. And they're tiny. Yeah, and then they slam into the wall and hurt themselves Aww. like idiots. <laughs> then they become ceviche. <laughs> Cabez's all like concerned. He's like, hey, do they hurt themselves? Do they have, do they have feelings? And yo, this was like, uh... for caring, yo. That matters. That's, that is a fool who cares, okay? Yeah. But uh, it's crazy, man. He, he's got, a, I think he said a capacity. I forgot the number. What was it? Uh, capacity he can do. I feel like he said 17,000. Like 1,800 pounds. Oh, 1,800 pounds. Or, I mean, yeah. how much he, he produces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a month, 1,800 a month. So here he is. He's, he's breaking one of those down. He's got the, sh uh, the shrimp shit there. Laura, do you eat this shrimp shit? I love shrimp shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've always been a hood eater when it comes to seafood, though. So, like, when I go out with friends now, as a kid, my parents used to take me to Portsacal. Portsacal in San Pedro. Yeah, yeah. And we did not discriminate. My mom had me eating los ojos de la fucking catfish, fried catfish. Oh, like, my dad She was like, shit. you don't waste shit. Just be careful and don't choke on a bone. Yeah, my grandma yeah, was always yeah. like, te vas a ahorcar. And I was always very careful. So, as an adult, I always know that I never want to go on. Well, not anymore. I'm in a relationship. But before, I would never want to go on a first date to eat shrimp because i have no qualms bitch if this is a lobster tail we're getting the meat baby okay yeah. so sometimes shit is involved and talk to us about the shrimp shit because y'all went because javier went through that in the yeah. article right so javier javier asked him like towards the end of it mm -hmm. he's like uh so you know the bloodline is that shit or is it not shit the guys like it's straight up shit so when you eat a shrimp like out in the mariscos place you know there's that whole controversy do you devein your shrimp or not mm -hmm. it's literally the the the, the shit intestine it's it's a very simple a lot of people clean it out as they're cleaning the the cascara out, exactly right? yeah mm -hmm. a lot of people will clean it out mm -hmm. um a lot of people don't you know so you know and you see in the and like i've uh, there's other marisqueros I've, I've i've gone to and i asked them the same thing do you clean it out or not some a lot of marisqueros like it they don't care yeah and the, the flavor gets lost because it gets cooked with the right. lime or i gets just boiled. feel like you're a weak ass fool if you clean it out you get fool <laughs> Come <to> la caca. <laughs> <laughs> Come caca, not, yo, we stayed marinating it for three hours like chef walter said that fool said he lets it you shouldn't let it go past yeah. three minutes yeah. we keep that shit in the fridge for hours yeah well that's the difference between like good marisqueros and you know not ones you know when yeah. they when they not make the ones. shrimp no sabo no sabo <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> anyways uh yeah so like if you go to like other restaurants will have the ceviche pre-made and they're mm -hmm. sitting there all day. Oh, yeah. And then the lime, the lime takes over the flavor. And then what you're eating is like lime-flavored shrimp yeah. or fish or whatever. A good marisquero makes it fresh. Like you saw Walter making that, right? If you're going to make a ceviche, it's fresh. You let the you, you cook it immediately with the shrimp, with the yeah. fish, like, I mean, with the lime. And that's how you make it. Um, but, yeah, going back to the shrimp shit, Javier asked him, like, is it... Is it um, is it okay to eat it or not? So he, safe. Yeah, it's safe. And he's basically saying that, like, it is. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's not like our, our it's, it, it's not shit like our shit. It's not feces. Yeah, it's not feces. <laughs> he said it's only like 40% processed and mm -hmm. it's most of it is like, you know, whatever they're eating from the bottom of the sea. But in his case, it's the shrimp feed. Yeah. And this was weird. So it's extra safe, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. this was Steve, his name's Steve Sutton. Shout out to Steve Sutton. He's a, you said uh, this fool's weird. Shout out to him. Yeah. Shout out to the <laughs> weirdo, Steve Sutton. Nah, he's cool as hell, but he was like, he eats his own shrimp feed to try it out. He wants to make sure that the feed he's given his shrimp tastes good. And the feed is what exactly? It's like the granular feed. Oh. So you know, and that is a good farmer. Yeah. They don't discriminate. They said, if you don't eat it, I'm going to try it too to make sure it's going to make you taste good yeah. for the person I'm selling it to. Well, it can affect the taste of the shrimp too. Mm. Especially if you're going to eat the shrimp shit. Because he broke one down. He opened it up and you could tell there was like a lot of shrimp feet still in it that mm. wasn't processed. Mm. So And that means it wasn't a good piece of shrimp. No, no, it, it's still a good piece of shrimp. Oh, okay. It's solid shrimp. It's okay. just, you know, once you cure it with the lime and you boil it or whatever, like yeah, you don't, nada. Ya no sabe nada. Yeah. So it's so still good. I want to give a shout out to Javier because my mouth is watering just reading this line. 
you talked about the taste. Javier wrote in the piece, it tastes so deeply oceanically sweet that it conjures up that magical first bite of your first aguachile. Javier, fool, you know your way with words. But Memo, <laughs> we have you here. What was the taste of it? He, at one point, he described it as butter. A bitch has never. When I tell you I have maruchan shrimp, the shrimp you get for $7.99 a pound at Food for Less or whatever fucking market I'm, I happen to be visiting. I've never tried a shrimp that's organically farmed in cities like Downey, the Mexican Beverly Hills, yeah. as we call it, right? Well, what was it taste like? It tasted It tasted very clean. Um, it did fa- taste like oceanic, but like um, it didn't have like that deep sea sea salt flavor. Mm-hmm. It was um, it had a really fucking nice snap to it. Like it tasted like I mean, I mean sometimes you know you go to some of these mariscos places and the shrimp's like like flimsy, you know, like limp and shit. Yeah. Now, <laughs> hey, we're not talking <laughs> about that kind of shrimp. Pela, tú quieres? <laughs> hey, camarón, pela, te doy. <laughs> Stop it. You're banging the table, yo. Sorry. We're gonna get Sorry, fired. Karen. Sorry, we're Karen. gonna get fired. When we bang on the table. <laughs> um but yeah no it's bomb it's i mean lamest terms it's fire yo but oh. yeah it was really good it was really clean it's some of the best of each i've ever tasted um and some of the local restaurants like holbosch you, okay. you know we yes, were at holbosch, holbosch. Where, where exactly mercado paloma mercado right Mercado paloma mm-hmm. yeah like he's uh, i guess he's serving some of his menu items are with that shrimp he's testing it out and other restaurants are testing it out already okay. um he's gonna sell it to retail and right now he's barely starting he's only got like two of those tanks up is he a one-person team uh, it's like a two-person team right now. Wow. Well, it's like a three-person. It's him, his partner, and the engineer who helped him build this whole oceanic system, mm-hmm. which is fucking nuts, by the way. He wouldn't. He's like, just don't film that area because I don't want people to like copy my shit. Oh, uh, okay. Because they put a lot of thought into that. Okay. But um, yeah, it's him. He's like, it's a, it's another uh, his engineer and some Mexican fool is always clowning on his ass. Apparently. He's oh, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we need, we always need that homie to humble us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it keeps it real with him. I'm like, that person's you, huh? Yeah. Secretly. No. <laughs> Memo, I know from history and conversations with you that you used to shrimp tilapia. Shrimp, shrimp tilapia? tilapia. <laughs> <laughs> no sabo. You used to farm tilapia. Yo, Memo does it all. This fool does production videos. Fool, I've tell us no about how you farm shit. tilapia. And what, do you, what are your thoughts on tilapia? We just had Chef Walter throw it down with some ahi tuna and some yellowtail. <clears throat> some imported Peruvian scallops. All right. There's a conversation and there is disagreements in the community about sh- fish and the shrimp and everything that we use for our ceviche. Yeah. So a little background I did with a primo of mine, Anselmo, who moved to San... San Anselmo? Anselmo. Okay, we call him name. Chemo. Shout out to that fool. I haven't talked to him in years since he moved to Santa Paula. But oh. <laughs> he's got a little rancho market out there right here. He's got his Chemo's Chorizo. So if you're in Santa Paula, hit him up. Tell him I said, what's up? But yeah, me and that fool were growing aquaponics. He got me into it. Aquaponics is where you're growing plants. Um, we were growing weed oh. with tilapia. So yeah, so this one. Those weed knew- were turned the fuck or those weed. What is wrong with my brain? Those <laughs> tilapia were turned the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. So it was it's aquaponics. We basically had the same thing as the the you know Sea Sun had with this shrimp farm where we had like a whole like you know tilapias growing, but we we would recycle and clean the water for the tilapia by feeding that water into the these planter beds where we had the weed growing. Oh. And then the weed would consume, it would clean it, and then uh, the water would come out fresh. You could actually drink the water, come out really clean. What? Yeah. I don't know how any of that works. That so, all sounds like I need dummies, like yeah. aquaponics for dummies, because I'm just like, wait, how does that happen? Yeah. So Ma- The math isn't mathing. The math isn't mathing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we, when we get together, our words just don't come right, out. Right, right. Just, just too much that we're talking about. We started talking about shrimp shit. What the fuck? <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah, I want to get into the tilapia factor here because I had this discussion with a lot of people. I know Chef Walter was like, oh, never tilapia. Never use no, tilapia. No, no, never use tilapia. <laughs> I've had this discussion with Miki from Erico, Vicky from Erico Selfaro, Javier Cabral, our chief editor. I don't know why people hate tilapia so much. They hate on it. Like, it's peasant food. Mm. Like, fools... You already need to relax. My I, favorite kind of food is peasant food, though. Yeah, like, you know what I'm talking with a about? A sandwich or a quesadilla. Yeah, when people are like, oh, we too good for tilapia, I'm like, sorry, Karen. <laughs> sorry, Karen. <laughs> sorry. He's making a statement, okay? <laughs> I'm making a statement right now. Look, I get it why people don't like tilapia because yeah. it's a bottom feeder, you know, same as like catfish, you know, like they're muddy, whatever. Those are my favorite fish. Yeah, but fish are fucking i mean tilapia are great they're cheap they're easy to produce they're they're and if you grow it in a farm like we were growing them they come out super clean and everything mm. like that i mean if you never had a mojarra de tilapia you know oh, 
Cuajara frita, o el arrocito en unos frijolitos mm. y unas tortillas de harina. For real, though. We're I mean, here for it. People need to stop disrespecting tilapia. Huh? I know it is, I know. <laughs> Quítame la baba. Yo, I feel like it's the production of it, too. Like you mentioned um, Sutton. Joshua Sutton? No. Steve Sutton. Steve Sutton. Yeah. What does this have to do with the environment and doing it safely? So well, you're saying thing. it, too, right? Yeah, so... So, like in shrimp farming or just any kind of fish farming, um, but especially in shrimp farming, it, it's hazardous to the environment because, I mean, these fools are out there trying to, like, capture the shrimp. And to capture the shrimp, they're fishing, like, a shit ton of other fish, mm. you know? And, and so it's, it's hazardous to the environment that way. There's a huge shrimp demand. I think he was saying that we have, like, we consume billions of, like, shrimp Damn. a year just in Southern California alone. So, um you know, like just the the, the 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 effects of like transporting all of that, mm -hmm. and, you know, affecting the uh, climate just that way. It has a big what do you call it? The footprint, the carbon footprint. There you go. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> We're gonna need to help each other with words too, girl. <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, yeah, real. so that and, and another thing is like you don't know where a lot of the shrimp is coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, some places, uh, like you know, they're they're bathing it in chlorine or ammonia to try to keep it clean. You know, it's like, uh, you know, there's a lot of health risks involved to a lot of the shrimp that's coming that. around the world. And you don't know where it's coming from. That's the thing, places yeah. like at seven ninety nine at Food for Less, right? Exactly. So you're saying eat fresh tilapia. Yeah. Eat tilapia that's maybe sustainably farmed? Yeah, if there is tilapia sustainably farmed. Right. I don't know if there is. I mean, we were doing it. We're not doing it anymore. Yeah, I saw Seaspiracy. I think that's what it's called on Netflix. And that shit shook me. Yeah. I was like, damn, like bluefin tuna i think or blue something some blue fish blue bluefin tuna bluefin tuna yeah. is like becoming endangered because yeah. it's being caught like it's being caught and like in in fishing yeah. right folks are just endangering all these species yeah. and that made me so sad like when i was watching i was dreaming of some avachiles and some cocktails and just all the amazing seafood i've ever had as they're like getting slaughtered I, on them right <laughs> when i go to the long beach aquarium i'm like look avachiles like when i see the shrimp i'm like what up <laughs> there's dinner later and then i go to marisco's place but it is fucked up yeah. like to know about like really the effects that humans yeah. have on a lot of these species and endangered animals yeah um so that are so crucial to like us living in on a healthy planet right yeah and uh, that's as you grab the plate i know i'm about <laughs> you're to, like yeah you're making me hungry girl <laughs> well, there's a couple bites left no but shout out to steve i mean he's trying to do something that's uh that that uh, he's trying to show people that it's possible to farm the shrimp to do it locally to do it uh healthy mm -hmm. to do it uh, in a way that doesn't impact the environment like he's recycling all the water yeah you know he's, he's even eating the shrimp shit yeah yeah i mean he's even eating the. Shrimp i don't even shit. know that's included i just want to <laughs> But, but yeah, I mean, in the right way. there is sustainable ways of doing mm -hmm. it where it's also healthy to the environment, to the people that consume it. And it's and it's delicious. His shrimp was really good. It's some of the best shrimp I've had. And who is he supplying it to so that folks can try it for few so who's watching? He's just starting, but he wants to grow and he's he wants to supply retail. So anybody okay. he's 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 uh, he's hooking up the front of the shop. So retail, anybody can go in and buy it. Oh, OK. Uh, but he's also sourcing it to, to restaurants. So he's got a clientele of restaurants. I think he's at about a dozen restaurants right oh. now. But he says he, he's growing he's that. He's building his team. Yeah. Where can folks find him in case they want to buy it retail? Uh, Transparency.com. Transparency.com. Follow yeah. LA Taco. I know we put the information on a lot of like the posts. That article's that up there too. So if you need, yes. you need to learn more information, yeah. go right there. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Memo, for breaking down shrimp shit. Camarón pelado tú quieres, camarón pelado te doy. Yo, we thank everybody watching so much for tuning in. We saw that we have a viewer from Panama. Yo, what? shout out to you, all the viewers that have been commenting and showing love. We thank you. We love you. We hope that you tune in next week. Next week, we're going to have an amazing episode. I don't want to tell you. Tune in. Look up. Look out for the uh, flyer as we always post it. But make sure to follow LA Taco on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. We're everywhere. We're taking over the world. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I tried sounding cute, but that laugh sounded a little bit like fucking <laughs> Ursula. <laughs> right. We're in the C theme. Um, but become a member. Always, always, always. We appreciate all the love. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. See you guys later.